Hey, hey. What is up, folks? Welcome back to LA Taco Live with Laura. Today's episode is going to be great. I say that every week because it's true. A quick reminder, LA Taco is an online publication that publishes stories about news, culture, politics, lifestyle, tacos, everything happening in Los Angeles. Here at LA Taco, my mouth watered when I said tacos, my bad. Here at LA Taco, we make those stories come alive, and we also bring on amazing guests, thanks to our producer, Karen Lopez, y'all. Today, we have Felipe Esparza and Jesus Morales in the motherfucking house. A round of a motherfucking applause. When I get excited, I say motherfucking a lot. I'm just super stoked to sit down with some of LA's legends. It's exactly what we do here at LA Taco. Please consider becoming a member. Go to latacocom slash join. We wouldn't be able to do this without our members. And we give a huge shout out to all of you that already are. So this week, per usual, we start our show off every week with a rant. And this week, I want to rant about self-care, self-love. And not in the cheesy ass way with the pink memes and the glitter, though I like those too sometimes. But in the real way where we wake up and we do things that are going to make us feel better for the rest of the week. Y'all, this last Saturday, I woke up and I said, it has been a minute. After COVID, after having two jobs, pretty much, after carrying so much shit because we're still on the panini press, I said, I'm going to do some shit that's going to bring me joy. So I woke up and I got a car wash because Matilde, my Jetta, was a motherfucking mess. I said, she needs a wax. She needs a clean. She needs a little rub down. Went to go get some coffee, waited and watched as they washed my beautiful car, tipped the man well because, you know, we do that. And then I said, what's next? A petty, petty, petty cure. Okay, I will send you feet pics if you're paying. My Venmo is Laura, Lauda with a zero. We can talk about that afterwards. Details are important. But I will send feet pics if you want them. I also, this week, got a manicure. Y'all. My girl, Athena Rose, shout out to Rosie and Covina, did my nails. If you watch Euphoria, I am not condoning drug use, but I am condoning Maddie fashion. These are my Maddie V-Day inspired nails. If you know Maddie, you know what's up. Um, so I got my nails done. I got a pedicure. I got my brows done because if you tuned in last week, they were looking a little fuzzy, which is in. So, you know, I'm doing I'm doing myself justice a little bit. And then I went to Ratalandia. I went to Disneyland because your girl I'm fucked up and got a pass. I'm, I'm continuing. I'm contributing to the fucked up corporation. But Disneyland brings me joy. OK, and I'm not going to I'm not going to fight with you about it. Uh, they have a very cutesy Valentine's Day menu all over the park right now. And I wanted to get the sour cherry dusted pretzel filled with cream cheese. You see that picture I was giving you at a very good mordida. I think I scared some kids and some guests, which is what I like to do best when I'm at places like Disneyland. Um, and I gave it a 6.5 out of 10. If you're wondering, it wasn't that great. But I also blame it on the fact that not all of my taste buds are completely back. For some shit they are, for some shit they aren't. <clears throat> so I say all this to say, I did all of this in a day, and then I ended up kicking it with some primos at a brewery later in the day. I was surrounded by people that I love, and as we're entering this new year still, it's February, I remind you all to take care of yourselves, to feed into the cutesy shit. It's Valentine's Day, whether you got a bay or not. Take care of yourselves, whether it's doing things that are responsible, like mopping the floor, grocery shopping if you can. I always, always push people that if they can to take days off during the week, take a Wednesday off. These places don't give a fuck about us. We need to give a fuck about us, okay? Take all the days off. Take care of yourself. This last Saturday really helped me, and I hope you're able to find some joy throughout your week or that you already did before today. So we're going to move on. Per usual, we start our show with amazing headlines while I talk shit and react to them. And this week, we've got some great ones, y'all. Um, but before we get into all of them, we did want to start off by sending our condolences to the family of Rene Ray Ramirez, pit master behind Southeast LA's Ray's Barbecue. He passed away this last week at 47. We're sending a lot of love. Our social media coordinator, wrote a piece for Ray um, where you can find information about his GoFundMe if you are looking to support his family. He had a huge impact on the Los Angeles food community, on the barbecue community. Everyone at LA Taco are huge fans of Ray's barbecue. So we do send our love and condolences to um, Ray's family um, and we'll continue to support Ray's barbecue. 
we're going to go ahead and shift towards COVID related headlines. An imposter healthcare worker gained access to a Silmar juvenile hall and obtained several COVID-19 swabs from youth members. Now, in the article, they share that no youth were injured in the process, but several of their mouths were swabbed. That's fucked up. Hopefully this information isn't going to be used too maliciously, which I can't I don't even want to go into thinking about what it's used for. Um, but it's just a reminder to keep trucha. We saw that there was a lot of reports on folks posting up on corners, taking social security numbers, getting your insurance information. Make sure that the place you're going to to continue to get tested is sanctioned or that they're not asking you for your social. We don't want people taking your identity when you're just trying to get uh trying to get checked and not get got by COVID. So be on the lookout for that. In other COVID related news, LA County is to keep the COVID-19 mask mandates in place as the state prepares to lift the mask requirements. The decision is being made in California due to an apparent drop in COVID cases and hospitalizations. And a lot of folks are confused, right? Like, why is L.A. County still keeping the masks on? Why is the state lifting? Listen, as we continue to say weekly, let's stay safe. We do know that school children and those that are unvaccinated, people that are in high risk areas, such as public transit and nursing facilities, will still be required to wear masks. I know I work in education at, at a I'm higher institution of higher education, and I know that we're attempting to continue to stay safe by keeping masks on. So... Do what makes you comfortable. If you're in LA County, you got to keep that motherfucking mask on. If you're beyond, it's being lifted. But let's stay tuned to see what happens from this mandate. <clears throat> Shifting over to sports. Yay, sports. The Super Bowl is this weekend. Okay. The man who apparently hospitalized a 49ers fan is arrested and he's claiming self-defense. Listen, I looked into the story. I found out that the person who's now in a medically induced coma actually started the fight by pushing the man who then punched him and which caused him to fall to the ground and go into this medically induced coma. So it's sports, y'all. I know some of y'all ride and die hard for these football players who may or may not give a fuck about you because they're there for a check. But y'all got to be careful, okay? And I'm a victim of it. I wanted to find some girls here and there when they come at me at the club. It could get dangerous out here. You, these men have their lives changed potentially forever, whether it's because of their health or because they're arrested and Lord knows what this man will be charged with. So as the Super Bowl nears, I, I just, you know, when, we, when folks drink, when folks imbibe, inebriation happens, a lot of shit can go down. Stay safe. People, look out for each other. Look out for your homies. Uh, make sure that no one's getting a little too rowdy. And just getting violent and then causing comas. Okay? We're, we don't, we're not here for that. Um, in other news, Knock LA reports that Super Bowl will not benefit working class people. They go on in the article to describe that there's five myths, myths they want to debunk about the Super Bowl. One is that it helps the local community. And then it claims that gentrification is actually affecting Inglewood, right? It's saying that the Super Bowl is great for the economy, but it's actually displacing community members. Another myth they went on to debunk was the fact that in order for the Super Bowl to be successful, policing needs to be increased. They're challenging this myth by sharing that a lot of federal authorities are joining L.A. Sheriff's Department and L.A. Police Department in pretty much arresting people of color, right? And targeting people of color and also raiding transit, right? We're seeing that um, ICE was spotted in the area and is pretty much scaring off vendors from selling food after the game. Um, so Knock LA says, fuck the Super Bowl, fuck the Olympics. We want a city that serves working class Angelinos, Angelinos <laughs> not a city for sale to investors and tourists. They're pissed, we get it. On to Snoop Super Bowl news. Snoop Dogg buys Death Row Records brand just days before the Super Bowl halftime show. Like our homie at Alec, Alex at LA Taco said, Death Row is a label he paid for. <laughs> People are excited about the Super Bowl show where Snoop, Dr. Dre, Kendrick Lamar, Eminem, Mary J. Blige will perform for over 100 million people watching. That lineup straight up sounds like a shuffle on my MP3 player. I used to download illegal shit on LimeWire 4. You know, like, you know, Eminem, a little bit of Eminem, a little bit of old school Mary J. Blige to make me feel like I really lived through the 90s. I hope it's a cool performance. Um, and Snoop Dogg said it was a dream come true to, to perform with these folks. So looking forward to seeing that. 
So we're going to go ahead and move on from the Super Bowl and get into some L.A. headlines. The city is outlining $5 million in recovery funds for the community where LAPD exploded fireworks. We're not sure if y'all remember where a community uh, pretty much blew up an area where a lot of houses were affected. Um, it destroyed vehicles, 40 people, damaged 35 properties. It, a lot was happening because LAPD apparently denotated fireworks in a, in a truck too close to communities, too close for comfort. Um, and so now a lot of these funds will be used to rebuild and provide ongoing assistance to the community members that were affected. We're glad to hear this. It was a little bit late in the game. I know that back then a lot of folks were seeking community resources. Um, I'm happy to see that they're now getting it and that um, LAPD is doing what they gotta do to make things better for those folks. This next headline, y'all. I have a special thing for wildlife. I give animals voices. I feel like they bring joy to my life. Um, and I just, it took me out when I read that turkeys are trashing a NASA research center in Silicon Valley. So they're getting the boot. Y'all, these alleged about 18 turkeys are fucking shit up. They are taking up residents of the Ames Research Center and have become so destructive. Apparently, they've been wreaking havoc. Wildlife officials had to put together a plan to relocate them. They're wilding out. They said, fuck Thanksgiving, fuck NASA, fuck all y'all. Apparently, they've destroyed cars, gardens, and even people have fallen victim to the birds' aggression. They're blocking traffic. They're fucking shit up. And you know what? I'm low-key here for it. We fuck up the environment a lot for animals. So shout out to these turkeys. And I'm also glad to report that this relocation will keep both them and community members safe. So they're going to stop, stop um, popping shit off, but they're going to be re relocated safely. So we're still taking care of the turkeys. On to more graceful topics. A Mexican figure skater achieves an Olympic first. 22-year-old uh, Donovan Carrillo from Guanajuato became the first Mexican to advance to the Olympic free skate final event on Tuesday. Que emoción, Donovan. We're giving you a shout out. I don't know much about skating, but I did see some videos and you better work, baby. So we're sending you love and, and a lot of luck. Y'all know that we're in the season of Girl Scout cookies. I already got my boxes. If you didn't, you fucked up because apparently there's a Girl Scout cookie shortage in Los Angeles right now. This is due to Little Brownie Baker, which is the company that provides a lot of the cookies to the Girl Scouts. They're facing a supply chain and labor issue, labor shortage issues. So if you didn't get your cookies, you fucked up. I got my Samoas and my dosi -si dos for me and my family. I heard that the best way to now buy the cookies is just, just look for them out on the streets. So make sure you're supporting the Girl Scouts. And apparently the organization has an application where you can find out where Girl Scouts are selling them. So um, get your get on it. Get them cookies. Um, following over to heat to the weather. Have y'all been experiencing this disrespectful heat? It has been hot as fuck. The building that I work in is cold. It's a frozen tundra. I'm in a refrigerator. I walk outside and it feels like an oven. It's not necessarily Mexicali where my mom's from, but it's fucking hot. I don't know how to dress. At 9 a.m. it's a certain temperature. When I come out, when I come out the house, it's different. I say all that to say that apparently we're gonna hit a record high of 85 during the Super Bowl this weekend. So all you folks traveling from afar, hopefully you're watching if you're from a different state. Thank you for tuning in. But pack light, baby. Like Erica Badu says, pack light. Okay, it's gonna be hot as fuck. It hasn't been this hot in a minute during the Super Bowl. I blame it on climate change, but I'm not a scientist and I'm okay with admitting that. Um, so just keep fresh. To close out headlines, we want to let you know that LA Taco is bringing you a new series called Tijuana Taco Safari with our editor Javier Cabral, with our Fu, with Fulermo del Toro, Memo Torres, where they're going to Tijuana and they're getting down with some amazing food and just visiting and showing people the amazing culture and everything happening in Tijuana. That's popping off. Let's take a sneak peek. We're here in Tijuana. I'm going to take them to some pretty out of the way spots. Super juicy and savory. Not the tourist stuff. Uh, taco safari, eat some bomb ass tacos. Doesn't even have a sign on it. It's a $600 trouble right there. I think I love it. This should be illegal. Sin palabras. It's delicious and I will definitely come back. Y'all, que rico. That carnita asada, the truffles. Ooh, 
sheesh like my mom says get chie make sure you tune in on every tuesday the first episode is premiering premiering this tuesday on february 15th and a new episode will come out weekly so make sure you're supporting uh because it's a poppin ass series and it's great so uh, we are gonna go ahead and move on to our first break and we'll be right back with the funny foo himself felipe esparza we'll see you in a bit I'm breathing heavy because we're going to try tamales. Yes. Say, it, say it with your chest, Walter. If you're it's gonna rico, pues, it. Más rico. <laughs> it hits different. A bat comes in, eats the seeds, and then, you know, poops off the seeds around uh, high And school. you need to look for those seeds at the bat poop. <laughs> Y'all, we talked about shrimp poop last week. We're talking about bat poop. Poop poop sometimes is important, baby. Okay. Veo muchas pedas de vino en tu futuro, yes. I love that. So wineries is your favorite pastime. Yes. You want to shake it? Try to shake it. Sure. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I saw that TikTok where they, you show like the people who are like casual, the serious ones. The, the different ones kinds of bartenders. Let me not put egg all over myself. I'm about to have an omelet in my hair. You show up and these fools catfishing. Hi. Just mm. ugly, oh. bad breath. <laughs> Outfits wasted. And for what? For 32 miles? Not down. No, there is no such thing as 32 mile dick. <laughs> <laughs> Not now. I mean, 26 miles, maybe. 25. Shout out to you, baby. <laughs> Walter. Walter. Right. Tequila just hits the throat and it's like, a, you know, yeah. like mezcal feels like it, it as a party, right? Especially exactly. what you mix it with yeah, it, yeah. Um, with the orange and all of that. So, yeah. wow, thanks for bringing that down yeah, for course. me. So I can get nerdy with all the tequila I'm stuff, here for you know? it. Off the tamar de mole from mi ranchito Veracruz. <laughs> <laughs> this is also where we may fight because Laura stays balling on a budget. So yo como pescado catfish. Tilapia, what's the right thing to do oh, and what's the wrong goodness. thing to do? You already said it. We're going to start fighting We're again. We're going to fight again? <laughs> yeah, I wouldn't use tilapia for a ceviche okay. at all. When did you get to the point where you knew that you made it? Because when I found out you were going to be a guest on this show, I was tripping. That's when I knew. Yeah. <laughs> No, I'm but Brendan. My manager was like, LA, LA Taco reached out. I was like, oh my God. You're like, it's I'm it. fucking here. It's it. I'm going to crunch it right into the microphone, okay? Yeah. Imagine if I have an allergic reaction to the spice. Oh I'm, my I'm a God, basic bitch. See? But how do you balance being a DJ, a business owner? And I feel like Cumbiaton is another business, Absolutely. right? Like, what does the balance look like for you? And what advice do you have for people who are pursuing these their passions in this way? So here he is. He's, he's breaking windows down. He's got the, sh uh, the shrimp shit there. Laura, do you eat this shrimp shit? I love <laughs> shrimp shit. I'm just kidding. <laughs> Everyone who promotes tacos, talk like this. You've never had tacos like this before. Or the name of the city, right here in Norwalk, California, they do it a little different. What do they do different? Tortilla, meat, that's it, that's a taco. Leave it alone, everyone. We're back, y'all. And not with a taco, but with someone who's fighting with me, using fighting words himself with this video we just saw. I am that person that calls out the city, but we're in the city of Pasadena right now, and we are with not a taco, but a fool, the funniest fool himself, Felipe Esparza is in the house. Laura, what's up, fool? <laughs> I'm going to be like you, what's up, fool? What's up, fool? When we're switching segments and all that. Thank you so much for being in the studio with us. Felipe, como estas? How you Bien, doing today? Gracias. Thanks for having me. Yo, we, we're going to get into a lot. I've watched so much of your stand-up. I'm a huge fan, but I want to get into the nitty-gritty of you from when you were born to where we're at now. So I just want to start off by asking uh, comedy. What was your journey like? Well, what's up? You were, you were just, you walked in, you were talking about being in an acting class. You do a lot. What is your, how did you get to where you're at right now? Well, um, it took a long time for my mom to push me out. <laughs> my mom had, I found out I was born in one of those, um, I guess those ladies that show up to your house and they give birth to you. Oh, I'm not okay. a hospital. Like the doulas? Yeah. Okay. <laughs> yeah, really born, starting at my birth. My mom huh? had me like in a little tub. For real? Natural birth, yeah. And you were born in Sinaloa? Sinaloa. Okay. Snuck in fair and square. I'm here for it. Oh, I'm over here pausing. I'm waiting for you to keep going. We really oh. started at birth. I'm here for it. No, so, and, um, <laughs> so um, I, I taught myself how to do stand-up comedy. I went to um, the Alley Weekly, like okay. everybody else, mm -hmm. or Drama Log or whatever magazine, Hollywood magazine that has acting classes. So there were these two um, comedy classes. One of them was called Greg Dean, and the other one was called Judy Brown. But they had a... They had like a free intro class okay. for about an hour. 
So it was free, it, but you didn't have to join. But I went to the free one, and it, I, I learned a little bit of comedy. Okay, how old were you then? I was young. I was late, my late 20s. Okay. I just came out of rehab. Okay. But um, when it came down to joining the class, it was like 500 bucks. Shit. It was After 500 one bucks class. to learn how to write and learn how to um, how to perform. And then at the end of the graduation, you perform at the Ice House or the Improv. Oh, shit. But um, I didn't have 500 dollars, so... But I learned how to write at one of those classes because it was like basic, like joke writing. Mm -hmm. So the woman said, um, okay, just compare your life to something. So she said, um, my life is just write like, like remember that book, Ad Lib? Mm -hmm. So write a verb. Okay, my life is um, like a jigsaw puzzle. And um, we're supposed to like a punchline after that. So I wrote, my life is like a jigsaw puzzle. There's a lot of missing pieces, and there's pieces from other puzzles, so this puzzle is never going to be figured out. <laughs> so that was like the first joke I wrote. Okay. And everybody laughed, and the woman said, um, you don't need this class. You're a pro. You're yeah, natural. Yeah, but I had no confidence, so I thought I needed a class. So from there, from being in that class, I met a comedian that told me, now, nah, dude, you got to go to this other place. Mm -hmm. For amateurs and mostly everybody there is new. Man, but I had no jokes. So I wrote like a bunch of jokes that I could think of. Yeah. And I went over there and I got laughs. But it was bad jokes. Like um, I said that um, I, it was very like stereotypical, like jokes, you know, like 80s virgin. <laughs> so I said, I'm also, they made a movie called The Last of the Mohicans about the last Mohican tribe. We should do one about Mexicans, man. Last of the mojados. <laughs> about the last Mexican that didn't catch. And did people laugh? And people would laugh. <laughs> they would die. So that was like my first joke. Then I wrote this other joke about um, how I don't relate. I don't relate to Shakespeare because um, a lot of the stuff that happened to him and the way he wrote doesn't apply to my life. I need like a Shakespeare for the hood, you know, like, you know, the, there's a crackhead, and he's yelling out, Rapunza, throw down my pipe. <laughs> you know what I mean? Something that applies to, to your life. Yeah. That's funny. So that was one of my jokes. So, I didn't know much about anything. So, the, the guy at the club, he said, his name was Johnny Roberts, mm -hmm. and his wife was named Barbara Wal Roberts. He said, hey, kid, we do a, we, we're going to tape a comedy show next next Tuesday. At noon, drop by. We'll put you on a show. So I was like, "It's a big deal." I'm gonna make it be on television. But I grew up without cable. Mm -hmm. I didn't know what cable was. HBO. I heard of it. Never had it. So um, his show was local access. Okay. Oh damn. So, okay. So it was like Channel Three Century Cable. But it, it, I remember that. Yeah. I didn't have cable either. Shit. So we had, we saw the celebrities on local access. But if you were a ten, but, but if you were watching this show at 10 p.m. on Tuesday night, you would have saw me. That was me sneaking out. So that around, was like probably. my first. I thought I made it. That's badass. I thought I was gonna be blow up. So. So I keep doing stand up comedy. I meet more people. I tell I start hanging out with comedians that are like, kind of famous but mm -hmm. not famous, like Jamie Kennedy. Mm -hmm. He was in that movie, um, I Know What You Did Last Summer, yeah, I guess. Yeah, I know what you're talking about, yeah. But I knew him when he was living in his car and parking it outside of the Wells Fargo. Damn. So he was homeless. So you've known but him through his journeys. I didn't know he was homeless because him and I, would, he, we would um, eat late all the time, like 3 in the morning. We are at Denny's writing jokes and hanging out. And then like he'll be the last guy saying bye. So if you have friends out there, man, if you're here in Hollywood or LA, watch out for the last person that says bye. You ask him, hey, motherfucker, are you homeless? Because you could spend the night at my house. Yeah, right. We didn't know. We didn't know. <laughs> he would be the last guy to say bye, and he would just go <laughs> sleeping at Wells Fargo parking Damn. lot. And now look at him and his journey. Yeah, so he, he had a journey. 
you talk about being a local access and i remember when hearing about you coming up people said you used to perform in backyards is yeah. that true i know you're from boyle heights i want to let you know i'm from east los so i'm in the neighboring area right i love my hood um what was that like is that where you, did you ever perform to get to practice your jokes in backyards was it at no, punk shows where I, was I it i did um i would perform in the beginning when as a stand up you got to perform every day like you you cannot you're not gonna anywhere you're at. It's not like um, when you're in a band, you know, and you could practice in your friend's garage mm -hmm. for five hours a day. Stand up comedy, you ca you can't do that. You know, you need an you can you need an audience. You need immediate um. You need a, a, a immediate reaction. You know, <laughs> immediate like you gotta have that reaction, or else you're not doing stand up comedy. You you're doing poetry. <laughs> Or public speaking, <laughs> or doing a TED talk, or giving advice. <laughs> you know, to, to really come up with the, the funny jokes, you know, and send the message out there. Yeah. It has to be really, really funny. So I would try to perform every day. Like, I had somewhere to go every day. Like, I, I, I do, I would, Monday nights, I would go to the Laugh Factory. Mm -hmm. Latino Night is a, it's a show that was started by Paul Rodriguez. Mm -hmm. And it was hosted by a comedian named Joy Medina, and then a guy named Benny Mena. And uh, along the way, it's changed. Um, now it's Ada Rodriguez, Eric Rivera. Mm -hmm. So you used but, to have a lineup throughout the week. Yes. So I will. I will call the Laugh Factory, and I said, "All right, I need to perform this week." So I will. Okay, I'm available Monday, Tuesday, all the whole week. Yeah. So I will perform at the Laugh Factory on Monday, and then per finish my show there. The the show's over at ten. And then I, I would drive to um, Hacienda Heights, okay. the hood. And there was a place called, um, I can't think of the name right now, the, the, the Sunset Room. Mm. It's a steakhouse and lobster, and they would have Monday Night Football. But after, at 10 o'clock, 1030, it would be comedy all the way to like 1. Damn. So you'd go from yeah. place to place. Yeah. And then Tuesday night, we would perform in Rosemead. At another place, spot called Casa Latina, and that place was like eighteen and over, and we would do stand up comedy from nine o'clock to ten thirty, and then there was like a dancing afterwards. Mm -hmm. There was like a party. <laughs> then Wednesday night, I had my own room in Montebello at, at the Wild Coyotes. Okay, I remember Wild Coyotes. Yeah, tortillas, <laughs> same owner, different name, Gotham's, Frank. Off of Beverly. Yeah. Yep, that right place changes names all the 3, time. 3600 Poplar, <laughs> right across the street from the Montebello Hospital. Yeah, the Beverly perfect. Hospital. If you get stabbed at this club, don't call 911. Walk Just across the street. Just walk over there, right? <laughs> they don't even give you towels and, and, a, and a food to go. Damn. So what I performed like? there. What was it like to start off performing? I know you mentioned that you you out of that reaction when you when you bomb. Like, what, is, what was bombing like? I'm curious. I'm bombing? a comedian for my family, but I mean, I'm not in front of a whole group. You mentioned practicing. Has how has that shifted? Man, because man, people don't a lot of young comedians don't know, man, that like bombing as bad as it is, as bad as it is. Yeah, it helps your comedy better than it than when you are getting laughs. And why is that? Because when you're getting laughs, you already perfected that joke. You know. Yeah. You already know. You know where to stand, what to how avoid. To set it up. You know what I mean? Yeah. But. But there's still more to learn. Yeah. But when you bomb, as bad as it is, it better than, as bad as it hurts inside, you're gonna get better from this. Like yeah. you get stronger. You know, it's like you're you're breaking um, you're breaking you're breaking a shell in your body. You know, you're building a new shell. Yeah. You know, you're you're like a butterfly. You're gonna turn into a butterfly. You're like fuck that. That but right didn't now, work. Gotta, but I'm expanding. You gotta break this cocoon now, <laughs> right? Yeah. Because I remember like not getting laughs. And like, okay, and then you learn from it, you know, okay, oh, again, I know what to do. This time, I won't offend the crowd right away. <laughs> I'll get the crowd to like me first. Yo, but that changes And enjoy up. my personality. Yeah. And then, I'll throw in the jokes that are going to offend them. You know, you have to know what community you're in. Because I feel like in some communities, you've like, got to start clowning people, no? I remember I got booed off the stage, and they snatched the microphone away from me. Cause see, I, I started out with a wrong joke, cause I was thinking about my brother, and he had just messed up. We already had mad at each other, mm -hmm. so I wrote this whole bit about him that was not ready. And I said, my brother, man, he always comes out of prison worse. The first time he went to prison, he came out a better thief. 
The second time he came out in prison, he came out a racist, like a brown nationalist. They're out there. He was racist. And the third time, he came out even worse. He came out a born-again Christian. <laughs> And what right there, they for? took the microphone away from me, <laughs> and they snatched it. But she didn't let me finish the joke. I said, yeah, man, now when he steals, it's in the name of the Lord. <laughs> God. And now when the police saw him in a stolen car, he said, now, nah, bro, it was a stolen officer. Somebody blessed it with me. God told me I got to see the signs. It was a, it was a, a, a car with the windows open, <laughs> and the, the keys were inside, and the, the engine were running. <laughs> How could I say no? That was set up. That car was there to bless him. But she didn't let me finish that. And she's, yeah. Damn, and you got booed off. Were you always funny, though? Because I want to get into, like, just the community you're a part of. I know you went to Roosevelt. I would have gone to Garfield. Were you, like, a class clown when you were in high school, too? I wasn't a class clown, man. I used to open up for him. Okay. So you used to set up the jokes? Be like, yeah. Hey, fool, now you can tell us. She was a up, class clown. He would, be, he would be funny in a way that would be offensive, that they're going to throw him out of the class. And you know he's being disrupt disruptive. Getting detention up. My, me, I was so funny that the teacher would laugh on the on the way of while well, she was writing a slip to kick my ass out of the classroom. <laughs> like she's laughing, you know she can't hold her, her laughter, but she's really kicking me out of the class. That guy, the class clown, he would get thrown out like um, shoved out, you know, like. Let me stay, you know. Yeah. Like, and, uh, I'm sorry. Out? He's he's crying on the way out. But you would get laughs. Me, I'm in the back getting killer laughs. Like I remember um not knowing stuff and the teacher, my history teacher, social science, he asked, um, does anybody know why Iraq was fighting Iran? And I said, Yes, I do, because it used to be it used to be, used to be <laughs> one country before. It was called Ira. And then one side said, listen, man, we're going to end the war with an N. And then this side said, no, Q, my friend. <laughs> so they can't end, they don't know how to end the war, Iran or Iraq. So really, the whole fight is really over spelling because they're, they're all Muslim, you know. Did anyone in the class believe you? They're like, Nobody, that makes sense. teacher laughed. <laughs> But they thought it was funny. That's funny. So you've done a lot since you've been in all of these clubs. You've shifted towards TV. I was a huge fan of Hentified. I saw that you came out on Hentified. What has it been like being on movie sets? I'm also a fan of your podcast, and I know you talk a lot about just being with actors. What is that? What it was that like when you first started? Well, first of all, is um, working on television mm -hmm. and doing stand up is different, you know, because when you deliver a line in acting, and this is very important for, for um, actor, mm -hmm. any actor out there who's trying to be an actor and you cannot get to that first line. It is so hard to get to that first line. Even even though like the guy delivering your line is telling you, hey, even though if, if the line is, hey man, I'm not gonna leave, make me leave. <laughs> you know? That could be the hardest line to deliver if you don't know how to act. So I found out that Cause when I if I if I deliver that line in stand up, mm -hmm. I'm gonna deliver the line and then I'm gonna look up, because I'm waiting for the laughs. I want to see who's laughing. You're waiting for the reaction. But when you're delivering a line in acting, you don't look up after the line or start looking around to see who's paying attention. You gotta stay straight faced. Like, you want me to leave now? But <laughs> I found out that you you gotta know the moment before you say the line. Like. Your, your chain of thought you know what made you get there yeah even though they're not showing you you gotta know how you got there you gotta create the story about what's and, gonna happen and, after in stand-up comedy i wrote everything so everything already is already here mm -hmm. but in acting you gotta know you gotta find a place in your mind that's gonna put you in that situation like okay maybe on the way here i fought with my wife and i, I was really road rage so by the time this guy tells me to leave, I'm going to react with full anger to him by what I just saw. Yeah. So you got to like have the whole system, even though no one's feeding that to you. People are asking right now, how do you do that? I don't know, bro. <laughs> That's why I'm doing stand-up. Yo, but you're talented because you do it well. You had me busting up and hentified when you got the fools high as fuck. What was it, off acid or peyote? Mushrooms. Mushrooms. I'm over here making shit up. You most did great. Of the, you know, Laura, most of the sh roles that I've got, I was like, wait a minute, man. I've lived through this, so, so it's going to be easy. You had the life experience ready. Like, when I, like on Superstore, 
my the, I auditioned for a, my the role of Cody, <laughs> which was it was written for anybody, not a white guy, anybody. But I got it because of my physical reactions to the questions. So it was like a some mascot for the show got into drugs and he killed himself, you know, so it was a big scandal. Mm-hmm. So they were gonna they were gonna drug test everybody on the show and that's when I appear. I've been in so many jobs <laughs> where um, Did you ever work for food they for were less? gonna drug test people <laughs> and I quit, you know? <laughs> or I left early you know, or I was randomly selected first. Get the cranberry juice. <laughs> yep, here you go, man, old school. You know. Yeah. So so they were saying, all right, man, we're going to be testing for PCP, heroin, um, pills, marijuana, cocaine. So I already knew, man, I got to be nervous. I started looking around <laughs> and started counting what she was saying. Okay, I did cocaine. I did heroin. I've done that. I've done this. So when I was counting like that, it made everybody laugh. And then I raised my hand because... If you're done drugs, you gotta leave early, eh? <laughs> you're like, hey, can I bounce? Can yeah, I- can we leave early, please? <laughs> That's I gotta buy funny. cranberry juice. What has been the wildest job you've had? Getting into that? Did you work in around in and around Boyle Heights? Yeah, I used to work at um, Dodger Stadium. Oh shit! Okay. I used to. I used to have. I, at first, I started off as selling souvenirs okay. like pennants, <laughs> Dodger koala bears, <laughs> pro grabs, pro grabs. Get your Dodger program. And it was a cool job, man. Like they used to pay us good money, like cash. Yeah. 20%. They, under the table? We sold. Or what's up? Huh? Under the table? Back then it was. They were, but when I first started, I was in high school. Mm-hmm. So they would give us, yeah, under the. They would tax us, but they would give us the cash right there. Damn, that's old school. So you sell like $460 worth of stuff, mm-hmm. come home with $70, I guess. Thing. There's a lot of money back then. Yeah. But now yeah. it's check. And back then when I was working, I was working for the Dodgers. It was before a company came in and bought the company. The stadium. So yeah. every Sunday, our manager would give us half off the Dodger merchandise. And did you did you go hard? I go hard, man. Are you a huge blue, Dodger fan? I had a blue jacket. <laughs> If you're from Isos, I feel like it's a thing, right? Like you gotta rep all the Dodger gear, unless you're a hater and you're you're repping another team. Just to yeah, be. if you're a hater, you're repping the Angels. Yeah, we got some cafecito for you. Let's Thank shift you. on to talking about food because we've talked a little bit about the comedy, and I know you're vegan. You're still vegan since 2011. People don't believe me, man. You're vegan. You're so fat. What do you eat? Crops? <laughs> well, you said frying lettuce in one what of your stuff. Frying lettuce. <laughs> what is what, what what led you to become vegan? Here at LA Taco, we're a publication. We publish everything about anything about food in Los Angeles. Um, so I'm curious about that. Like, why veganism? I was on the Atkins diet before the Doctor Atkins diet. That mm-hmm. the, the diet that everybody's doing now. That's but all just, meat, right? Yes. Yeah, all, yeah. All it's, fat. It's the same diet that people are doing now, but it has a different name now. It's keto. Ketos, same thing. And um, they call it ketos because of that little strip that you pee on to be ketosis. Okay. <laughs> when you're a, it's like if you if you're at the point of that keto diet of eating like just meat, water, no carbs, no carbs. When you pee on that thing, it's gonna go to dark purple, and that means your body is running on all on all fat now. Oh, and that shit trips me out. So you start losing sh- fast weight. But if you don't do it right, like you don't see a doctor first or a nutritionist, you go balls out like I did, mm-hmm. you're going to die. So I was eating cheese and meat. Jalapeno poppers. And yep, and no <laughs> vegetables. I will, go to, I will go to In-N-Out and get the 4x4 four four animal style, protein style. I can't. So well, I had like four patties, <laughs> eight pieces of cheese, wrapped on lettuce. I eat two of those. With Diet Pepsi, Diet Coke, <laughs> and no you water. Diet. I was not drinking water. Shit. So by the time, like in two weeks, I had lost like 15 pounds, but I was constipated, man. Uh, and I, I, I had to go to a Lamaz class. A Lamaz class? To learn class? how to breathe and push a baby out. <laughs> so. <laughs> the lettuce on the, on the protein didn't didn't help. help. Man, Shit. So you need leafier greens. I was all <laughs> bad and constipated. So I, I, I had like my um, I, 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 I ripped my butthole out. I guess Shit. it was like bad, man. 
So that that caused you to turn to vegan. Hell yeah, man! Yeah. After that, I just drank. I said, you know what? I'm not gonna eat, eat meat no more. So I started just eating um, vegetables only, mm-hmm. and um, soy milk, oatmeal in the morning, no meat. I wasn't even going to a vegan restaurants. I was just eating whatever I had in my house, like raw. That raw they didn't vegetables? have no meat in it. Did you cook them or was it was it like a what? raw diet? The vegetables. Yeah, I cooked vegetables. I went to like soup plantation. And I got salad dressing that didn't have milk in it. Okay. And I ate no fish. And I started noticing my body cleaning up. Because I went to the restroom and I had to look, right? Yeah. And it was like black. Oh, like a fuck. piece of black liver, you know? Like just black. Really black. Your body was deep. Black. Seeing you. And, I, and, I, and I had to look it up, man. Am I dying from the inside? <laughs> am, I, am I rotting now? Is it what's really going on? Cause this didn't even smell. It's just horrible. Shit. And it looked like hígado, man. Like hígado and cebollado. Pero yeah, si like that, yeah. <laughs> so when I found out about it, I went. I looked it up. I just put a picture on Google, and they looked it up. And then, and then like I had to try it ten times because the first time it came back, it wasn't, it wasn't right. But yeah, they said my body was cleaning up, Damn. and that's just all the the toxins of my body leaving. Damn. And that's all just from starting to eat vegetables and no yeah. animal products. So yeah, man, and yeah. So <laughs> you're like, yeah, you're you're reminiscing on those times. I was in pain, man. I, I thought I was being raped by a ghost that night. Shit. <laughs> Cause I never had a hemorrhoid before, man, and I I I'm, I've heard that pregnant women have them when they push babies out, but man, was it was painful, man. Yeah. It's it like it, it was. You're not a man until you get a hemorrhoid, eh? Like you don't know who to tell because you because of being a macho. Machismo, like it's not something you could just tell a random guy. Hey, bro, I'm gonna talk to you personal, man to man, bro. You ever shit and your butt hurts like hell, <laughs> like hard, hard, bro. Like when your uncle touched you, you know, like really pain, bad, bro. In the pain. Like he goes, "Why are you telling me this? How come you don't tell a doctor this? I don't have Obamacare, bro. I gotta tell somebody." Shit. He goes, "Google it." So then I googled it, and it was all bad, man. So what do you experiment? Do you go to vegan restaurants now? Like, what's your favorite vegan dish? Oh, I go to um, a place in Van Nuys. It's called El Cocinero. El Cocinero. Okay. And they have vegan um, birria, Ooh. vegan sopes, vegan um, nacho cheese. They have um, al pastor made with soy curls and okay. pineapple. And it's flavored well. I have two cousins in Portland who have a, a queer taqueria called Mis Tacones. And they serve like tortillas. I like that name. Yo, that's you a should good go one. If because you go to Portland. That's a good Mis Tacones because right here in um, in LA, on, on Santa Monica Boulevard, mm-hmm. there's, a, there's a place in West Hollywood called Los Tacos. And that lady gets down, man. You know it's going to be a good restaurant. When you walk in there and there's a, a picture of the Last Supper and they're all Mexican actors. <laughs> like they got Santos and Blue Demon, Angelica Maria, Vicente Fernandez in the middle. And they're all Mexican actors. You know, because we praise them the same. And they have hard shell chicken tacos the way your mom made them. Like she, they actually they boil the chicken and then they, they peel all the meat mm-hmm. out with their fingers and then they deep fry it again and they put in the meat in the hard shell. And there's enough sour cream for everybody. Yeah. <laughs> It'll hold out. Was that your favorite taco before you became vegan? Yeah, man. Yeah. And they have like they have like agua de sandia there. Mm. But getting back to los tacones, I told my friend to go there, but he went there like at midnight, like at one in the morning. That's when all the party people are coming out. Mm-hmm. You know, all the people are coming out, and there was a lot of like men dressed. You know, and, and dressed in drag. Mm-hmm. You know, there were some men that were pretty much straight, but that's their lifestyle. They, yeah. they they do shows like that. Mm-hmm. But there were also transgender men, and my brother, my friend, called me. Oh, damn, bro, this place is good, but goddamn, bro, it shows it to los tacones at night. <laughs> So they got a good name right down there. Yeah, it's they popular. got it going on, man. I want to check it out, Los Tacos. If you're ever in Portland, check out Mis Tacones. But I I'm will. not vegan, but I fuck with vegan food heavy. Yo. When it tastes, I, I'm trying to be a little healthier too. When it just tastes the same and it's a little healthier, why not go for it? Yeah, man, it's had to be. You, you can still get fat from vegan food, though. There's a lot of tortillas in there. Yeah, a lot. you can still fry shit. Like fried green tomatoes. Fry, oh, never, I never had that. I've been wanting to taste that. They're fire. I never have fried green tomatoes. They're fire. And a sandwich? The green one, right? Mm-hmm. 
El tomatillo. Yeah, I Pero saw the cooking channel thing beat Bobby Flay. Mm -hmm. And he had to beat a, a, a woman that sells fried green tomatoes. And he beat her, I think, because he added a piece of crab cake on top of oh, it. Oh, shit. I'm sure that added texture and all that. <laughs> yeah, I that love that. Good. We love food. Well, do you have a favorite vegan, vegan taco? Is it from El Cocinero? Yeah, man. Yeah. Of course, if you're Not in nice. Berkeley, man, you gotta check out um, Los Tacos. Los Tacos. That's the original place. Like when I, when I turned vegan, that was the first chicken taco I ever had was the Los Tacos, and it's like a fried flauta. Mm, it's fire. Fire, man. So I read somewhere that you could you can't start your morning unless you have a cafecito like you're drinking now and a bowl or a blunt. What's your favorite munchy food, yo? And I also read somewhere that you eat the sandwich, you need the jalapeño and the Doritos with tapatio. I felt like, am I Felipe Esparza? Because that's my shit. Hell yeah, Take man. Gomez. What do you like to eat when you're high as fuck? When I, cause he, growing up, there were those, there were them, you know, like every get every store in the hood, you know, you, you got your liquor store that's mm -hmm. owned by the Korean Asian man, you know, but there's also every once in a while there's a little marquesita mm -hmm. and that's owned by one of us. Yeah. You know, all our stuff is in there. That lady gives credit to everybody. Yeah. It's on the list, you know. The whole neighbor knows how much your mom owes. <laughs> and she and um, and um that place I forgot what I was saying. What were you saying? We we're talking about your favorite um, munchie. Your oh. favorite munchie snack. And that place, it was called Murillo's. Murillo's. Murillo's Market. And it's in, like, it's in the hood, man. Like in the neighborhood. Like there's a park across the street. There's somebody's house across the street from that house. So they're, they're in the neighborhood. Like there's four houses on the side of the store. Mm -hmm. There's no street. And I would make, like I would make a torta with a jamón. Fuck yeah, in Bolillo. In Bolillo. Did it have chicharrón y aguacate inside? It had aguacate. It had the, the, the Monterey Jack cheese. She, she would slice it herself. Damn. And um, it, had, it had a jalapeno wrapped inside of it. And uh, with a little um, Springfield soda Damn. and Doritos nacho cheese. That sounds fun. That's like the perfect meal. Wow. You know? The perfect the little meal. Little kids were standing in line buying that shit after school. The tortas like that are special too, especially if they've been wrapped up for a minute and they're like not completely fresh, but they've like just gotten, you know, they just, they're yeah. fire. It's so that's bomb, your favorite. Man. Then for dessert, man, you get something like, I remember this kid, he would get the little Alexander grapes a little can they're like lemon remember, remember, remember they have lemon heads yeah then they have the cinnamon ones the red hot red hots then they have Boston baked beans mm, those are but my but then shit. the other ones were grey they were blue oh shit I don't and remember and my those. friend would stuff those in the pickles and he that was, was stuff, dessert he would stuff it in the pickle like all of it so he would taste like this grapey flavored pickle I feel like people do wild shit with wild. pickles I've been seeing like tapatio pickles that are trending lately yeah man our, 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 our stores we would get like um the lady will have like a nacho cheese and she will pour it inside of Doritos for a dollar. Oh, yeah. Like, or how about hot Cheetos with hot Cheetos? Hot Cheetos with cheese, yeah. Que rico. Bunions. Yo, we're getting into food. I'm getting all excited. Or the jalap <laughs> or, or, man, when I was in Corpus Christi, I saw one of the nastiest things ever. There was like a mixed couple. It was a, a this lady, I guess she's from, from Texas and this guy from Mexico, but they were married. They're like totally mixed couple where the guy barely speaks English mm -hmm. and she barely speaks Spanish but they're still in love this guy was at a, 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 a raspado stand right outside the Selena statue raspado you know snow cone he ordered a snow cone called El Diablito yeah and it's just a snow cone full of tapatio only oh shit and, a, and lemon I was thinking chamoy lemon, lemon and some and then like some tahini over it mm -hmm. but it's barely it's like that and I said wow that's nasty that's disgusting I thought you were going to say chamoy yeah but his wife you know she took it to the next level you know because you know she's from the trailer park you know she's going to keep it real yeah she ordered a, a, a snow cone full of pickle juice yeah like she said I, what, what flavor you want ma'am she said, pickle juice. And then <laughs> the guy poured pickle juice over it, like real pickle juice. Like, That's a flavor. And then he, over, he put a little bit of lime flavor over it. But yeah, it was pickle juice with a little bit of lime. I mean, if so it's coupled with a whiskey, I might be down for, have you ever had a pickle back? Yeah. Se me sobra la boca. See, I fuck with that a little bit because it, it, it takes like, away. I grew up poor, man. Poor, but not 
I'm gonna order a pickle juice <laughs> raspado <laughs> whenever we have when I have money in my pocket to buy a real flavor. Right. You know? What's your favorite raspado? Man, there's so many tamarindo. Tamarindo. Mm. And when I was drinking milk, the vanilla one Ooh, the, and the, the strawberry, the one that's all artificial and yellow. But actually, I, I like the the Hawaiian snow cone. That's the one that where you know they put um. The pineapple, yeah. lemon, strawberry, and then they get that lechera and they put over it. That sounds fire. Well, thank you so much. Our time went by so fast. Yeah. What's up, everybody? <laughs> April 29th. I'm yep. going to be at the Orpheum Theater. Netflix is the joke. I think they just added a second show, so look out for that. Yeah, your tickets. I was about to ask you, where, where, where what can we see you in next? Yeah, April 29th, Orpheum, Orpheum downtown LA. Okay. FelipeWorld.com slash tour if you're watching this from another state like charlotte you know keeping it real over there you miss out late check me out in charlotte at the end of the month yeah yes felipe is everywhere around the world so make sure to tune in follow him on instagram check out all the stand-up we'll be right back we're gonna take a quick break no en exceso de condimentos, solamente lo que, lo que es. I quit my full-time job to be able to do these pop-ups more often, and it, it, I've never been happier, to be honest with me. This drink, connecting with folks in food is just so satisfying. LA Taco, estoy reportando en vivo desde la Playa Larga, a.k.a. Long Beach. We are with La Familia Lara doing the next episode of Hanging with Taqueros, sponsored by the one and only White Claw. And I'm talking about ahogándonos en salsa picante y salsa jugosa, okay? We are here ahogándonos en tortas ahogadas with Tortas del Aguila. We are seeing now that this pop-up is ran by women. Las Mujeres Lara, okay? Unas chuladas de mujeres. who are helping Miguel Lara prepare the tortas. Natalie, tell us about Tortas El Aguila. Tell us about yourself. You were looking great, by the way. You better work. Thank you. So I'm Natalie Lara, la hija del tortero de Southeast LA, que no come chile. You know, my folks are from Guadalajara, and when you think Guadalajara, you think torta. But yeah, my folks are the ones that are the masters behind Tortas El Aguila, for sure. Aquí estamos con el señor Lara, Miguel Lara, que es el tortero mero mero. Go <laughs> ¿Usted es alérgico? Ya no puedo comer chile. Me di cuenta cuando lo probé con una tortilla chip, sentí ahogarme. No lo prueba, pero lo cocina bien. Ahí estamos. Miguel, platíquenos cómo empezó Tortas el Águila. Mira, empezamos. Mi mujer fue la que empezó. Es la que me dio alas. Y yo quiero preguntarle, ¿cuál es su favorita hija y por qué? La más favorita. La mamá de ellas. ¿Sí? We love a romance. We love a romantic. Okay, ¿cómo se llama su esposa, la mujer? Irene. You heard it first, y'all. Irene Lara is the one who created these tortas. Come through and check them out. So we are here with la otra hija de la familia Lara. Please tell us about yourself. First of all, I have to say I love that title, La Otra Hija, uh, Mayra, a.k.a. I used to be the favorite daughter, and then my little sister came around, Alyssa, um, so now she's the princess, the favorite, um, but I'm the second oldest, uh, just been seeing my parents hustle for years, and to now see them sell their food, and just the joy that it gives them to feed people and to see folks enjoy the food has been such a pleasure to witness. That is so beautiful. Can you tell us where your favorite taco is from? Yes. El taco de trocito de puerco from San Juditas out in East LA. Yeah. Para chuparse los dedos. That's a fire taco. Can you tell us what your favorite taco in Los Angeles is? My favorite taco in Los Angeles is my dad's taco. I'm going to be honest. Listen, I, I I love my parents' food. My dad also makes tacos, and I'm, I'm a little basic. You know, just carne asada with some salsa roja, the cebolla, cilantro. It's just, it's perfection. Yes, so Mayra's rocking the carne asada taco OG out here. We love it. <laughs> Miguel, ¿cuál es su favorito taco de Los Angeles? De buche y en el mercado central. Pero te estoy hablando de hace... Uh, in 1979-80, when it was the market, where they sold fruits, 
Taco, si ahora. So he's commenting on the gentrification. Grand Central Market has changed. Mira. Pura cerveza. They didn't have that back then, y'all. They had tacos straight up for the community. <laughs> Fruit, vegetables, and tacos. Irene Lara taught him. Miguel Lara is out here cooking it up. Libras do things with love and sazon, okay? Don't get it twisted. Ella es la que me enseñó. Ella es la que me enseñó. All the credit to Irene. She's not here, but shout out to her. Reportando en vivo, sentiéndome como una torta ahogada. Estoy aquí en la Playa Larga, in Long Beach. If you have not tried tortas ahogadas from Tortas El Aguila, we recommend you come and drown. Drown in the salsa, drown in the joy, drown with the family. Hang it with taqueros, sponsored by the one and only White Claw. We love you, LA Taco Fam. All right. Ready? Mm -hmm. We are here with Tacos Los Cholos, where they are gonna tell us about their premium meats for the next episode of Hanging with Taqueros, sponsored by White Claw. All right, so here I am with the one and only Mero Mero Cholo. Tell us your name, tell us about yourself. My name is Josue, um, 28 years old, started this business around two and a half years ago with my partner. Um, straight from the streets for you guys, that's what we're doing here, cooking some flame premium meats, soft cuts, anything you guys like, we're here for you guys. We love soft, we love <laughs> soft cuts, we love hard cuts, we're out here. Who'd you start this with? Uh, no, I started with my partner, Michael. Cool, so let's meet Michael. Whose socks are higher? Sorry, I didn't know. Oh, shit! <laughs> How do you want me to do that? <laughs> the higher the sock, the bomber the taco. Exactly. So tell us about yourself. So my name is Mike, I'm 28 years old too. And we both started kicking it when we were in seventh grade and always hanging out on the streets. Now we, look, we do what we love doing, cooking tacos in the streets and cooking quality meats. That's so beautiful, yo. Imagine with your seventh grade homie now achieving your <laughs> dreams, selling premium meats out in Anaheim. I love to, we love to see it. All right, Josue, Michael, folks at LA Taco love to have their menus curated by the folks who know best. So what do you recommend people order when they come to Tacos Los Cholos? Uh, for sure, when you come down here, make sure you get the papa loca de rachera. So we open up our papas, put butter, sour cream, cheese, load it up with meat and guac on top, and it's amazing. Damn, they open them up and stuff them. We're yeah. here for that. We love that. <laughs> So I recommend a taco de tripa. It's always delicious. Always cooked over the mesquite grill. Never pre-cooked or anything. We like to make it nice and crispy for the for the customer, and you get a, you get smacked in the face with the smoky flavor, the salty flavor. Knocks you out. We love to get smacked. <laughs> <laughs> what are you doing over here? <laughs> I just want to get it over so I can enjoy it. It is fire. Let's see if Michael was being honest about the tripa. Pa chuparse los dedos. <laughs> Come and get smacked like the tripa that tacos los cholos. Tell us about what your style is. We have a little bit of everything, so we do like Tijuana style, and I guess you could do a little bit of Sonora style. It's the style of the streets. <laughs> That's yes. what it is, the style of the streets. Something you only find, you know, it's a mixture of like, it's ghetto fabulous. You got Riva in the hood, you know? <laughs> so. I'm about to bust out my eye. <laughs> ghetto superstar. We can tell these cholos love to smoke. These cholos smoke everything. These fools are stay smoking meats, never scante. But before we let y'all go, I want to know what your favorite tacos you've ever tasted are and where from. Well, I enjoy the tacos de Saldero from Avenue 26. So shout out to Avenue 26. They got some good stuff down there. So. Yes. My favorite taco is un taco de carnitas from Via Moreliana in downtown LA. Probably the best. Yes, those carnitas are smooth and popping. <laughs> I don't know what the fuck I meant. <laughs> <laughs> LA Taco, saca el carrito, come through to Anaheim, support your local cholos. Tacos Los Cholos is smoking up some of the best meats. Thanks for tuning in to Hanging with Taqueros, sponsored by White Claw. ¿Cuántos están los elotes? En cinco el vaso. Ah, deme un elote en vaso, por favor. ¿Cómo lo va su día? Eh, la verdad, muy lento. Muy lento. ¿Ya está listo para la Navidad? Más o menos. Más o menos. <risa> pues le quería dar un regalo. Mil dólares, mi amigo. <risa> mi niño tiene síndrome de Down. Pero sí estoy haciendo esto. 
no sabía si los iba a ver en agua. Ellos están en México. No tienes idea de lo que significa. Con esto voy a asegurar que voy a poder ir a verlo. Me da tanta alegría oír eso, mi amigo. No sabes cuánta alegría me da. Más. Quiero que sepa, ese viene, viene de parte de donaciones que me mandan mis seguidores por mis redes sociales. Viene con mucho amor el dinero. Muchas gracias. De nada, mi amigo. Que, que Dios lo bendiga y que siga adelante, ¿ok? Gracias. Hasta luego. Tenga buen día. We are back from break, y'all, with philanthropist himself. We just saw this video. Jesus Morales is out here in the streets changing lives, yo. Changing lives and really doing a lot. Welcome to the studio, Jesus. Thank you so much, Lana. How are you doing today? I'm great. How are you? I'm good. I'm excited to have you and talk about all the great work you're doing. <laughs> Thank you. We're I'm giving you your, your flowers, your round of applause. Muchas gracias, muchas gracias. So you, we're seeing you, you're, you're viral on TikTok. Yeah. You're viral in the nation. We're going to talk about a lot of that. But how did your journey into making changing people's lives begin? Oh, man. Uh, well, it started in 2020. Okay. Uh, I had just recently lost my job because pues, everything got locked the down. Pandemic, right? yeah. And um, I was on TikTok and I was just I came across two accounts, actually, two really amazing accounts. Mm -hmm. First one being uh, her name is Lexi Lately. Lexi uh, Lately. I'm not sure if you've came across her before, but she just basically crowdfunds money to give massive tips at like restaurants. She okay. lives in Tennessee and she, I thought that was amazing. I'm like, wow, she's out here like using her platform to give money back. Yeah. But there's actually someone that I always give credit to porque she was doing it first. Her name's Viridiana Serrano. Viridiana. She was on TikTok and I came across her account where she was giving money to street vendors, like okay. large tips, $200, $300. I was like, that's beautiful. And there was always a, um, an elotero that always came down my street. I was like, I want to do that for, for my local street, yeah. my street vendor. That'd be so dope. But like, imagine if I could do that. The way Lexi does and give him a thousand dollars. Yeah. And obviously I didn't have the money like that at the time. And I was like, I just got to start somewhere. So I just took a hundred dollars out of my pocket, went up to my local vendor that day and uh, I gave him a hundred dollars and I recorded it. I wanted to uh, post it on TikTok to hopefully start like a little movement. Yeah. And that really just kick started it all. Uh, Change your life too. From then to now, we've raised nearly two hundred thousand dollars and given it directly to street vendors here in Southern wow. California. Wow! And that's twenty twenty yeah. in two years. Just about, yeah. That's so beautiful, yo. So you talk about struggling during the pandemic. What did you do before getting into into <sighs> doing this on TikTok? So I was actually working uh, just typical nine to five. I was working at a local gym um, in San Diego, and I was working there since I had just moved to San Diego. Actually, I, mm. I started the job in twenty seventeen, and I had been working there ever since. Okay. And I was just I was just hustling for uh, for a motion and it was funny enough like the week before the lockdown happened they were like all right it's time we're gonna give you a promotion the one i had been itching for for forever wow. y luego, boom hey sorry we're, we're what was the now. promotion your uh, bodybuilder no that? no i was a i was a supervisor <laughs> at the time I was oh, a supervisor okay at the, i was a, at a gym okay y entonces uh i had been wanting to be in management like i was just you know i was just trying to You're come hustler, up i was yeah. hustling you know and i i really at the time like in that chapter of my life i was like yeah like this is what I, this is what i meant for yeah right but it was like God had something else for me. And it was just it, like that. The, the pandemic was a curse, but also a blessing for mm -hmm. me in a way. Because it introduced you yeah. to doing this great work. Yeah. And uh, it's, it's weird. It's weird. I didn't think it'd be on TikTok. I, I never even imagined to be on TikTok, but it really just And TikTok also blew up during the pandemic, exactly. right? Yeah. I don't, yeah. I mean, I'm still not the best at it. Okay. Sometimes <laughs> so I'm like, good. wait, how many views? Did I get 40 views? Wow. <laughs> I used to get excited. Yeah. yeah but excited. you have hundreds and thousands. How many, wait, actually millions of followers on TikTok, right? Yeah. I have one. Point six, I think. You have 1.6 million people watching you for the great work that you're doing and for more yeah. now, right? So you're saying that you you took $100 out of your own pocket to start it. What what did the process become after that? Uh, like what, with that one video, did that generate a lot of popularity immediately? What was that like? No, it, it didn't happen overnight. Yeah. So like that first video, it, it got like, I think that's, it got like 200, 300,000 views, which was a lot for me at the time. I was yeah. like, that's a lot. And people were like, at How the do time, I I'm like, right now, still, that's <laughs> a lot still, of views. Yeah, it's still a lot of views. Yeah. No, yeah, don't get me wrong. But, um, yeah, essentially, people were like commenting, like, hey, I want to help out. Like, how do, we, yeah. how do we help? And slowly but surely, like, people started donating Venmo, Cash App, like $5, $10. Here you go, like, here and there. And so those $100 turned to $200 for the next video. And then okay. the next video was $300. And then it, 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 I remember the jump went from one video, we, we donated $500 to a street vendor. And then the next one, I was able to give them a thousand dollars. I remember the first time I gave a thousand dollars to a family. They were selling elotes at a parking lot at a North Gate over in uh, San Diego. Mm -hmm. The van was super busted up, and like they were like the little kids were like elotes, elotes, I and mean, like it just broke my heart. Yeah. And I was like, I have the money, like let me do it. 
And I, I remember that first time I gave $1,000 away, I was like, wow, I want to do this over and over again. And what like, was their response? Oh, she cried. The mom cried. You know, she was a single mom. And the kids were just so excited because, like, like we, I didn't expect it to happen, but in the moment, it just felt right. I was like, yeah, like, I'm going to give her this money. Yeah. Y pues, she was just so thankful. She was so grateful. She was just working. She was hustling to yeah. be able to pay for her. She was trying to get new breaks, and she was trying to sell lotes to save enough wow. for those breaks. and. She said that. And it's awesome, too. Like, I know many times like it, it, we see children, like, hustling with their families, yep. right? My mom also shares a lot of stories with me where in her upbringing um, and showing, like, your kids the, uh -huh. the idea of hustling. So talking about family, what has your family's response been like to this? Uh -huh. I know I see a cute baby on your social yes. media. I'm not sure if that's your family. Yes, that's, but... my, that's my little boy. Okay. Yeah, that's my son and my girlfriend, Mireya. Yeah. Um, I mean, they're super supportive. My girl's super supportive of mm -hmm. what I do. And like, obviously it also goes even deeper than that. Like my parents, like my parents were immigrants, you know, okay. they come from San Luis Potosí, Mexico. And, um, although they weren't street vendors or nothing like that, like my parents struggled, like yeah. they came to this country with nothing. Yes. They like, they were literally sleeping on a piece of cardboard on a basement floor when I first came here. Wow. And so like that, they're, they're a big inspiration as to why I continue doing this, you know, for the street vendor community. Porque, I mean, Many of them are also immigrants just looking for, you know, that American dream. Yeah. Have they ever gone with you to do to drop off these gifts? One time, one time when I was in Chicago, I went to go visit my family. Mm -hmm. Yes. They, uh, yeah. We did a few donations together and they were just like, wow, like it's so weird to see like the behind the scenes of how it goes down. And, yeah, that's yeah, beautiful. Yeah. I love that you're doing that. Um, and thank you for doing that, yeah, right? No, I need to make sure to, to continue no, to support. It's an honor to be able to do this. Like, I feel so blessed that like the community like trust me enough to be able to do this on their behalf, you know? Yeah, definitely. So you're from Chicago. You're up in Chicago. Yeah, not from Chicago, Chicago. But Aurora. Yeah, Aurora, yeah. Illinois. Okay. Este, yeah, I moved to San Diego in 2017. Okay, so you're supporting the street vendor community in San Diego primarily. Primarily, yeah. And so how yeah. do you choose the vendors? Is it really random or do you ever get, with these millions of followers, <laughs> do you ever get requests? Yes. Like, can you donate to this person? I know for mm -hmm. me, I could think of like eight of them that yeah. feel like family members, right? Because yeah, yeah. that's what they really are. I feel like street vendors really, um, we have a reporter at LA Taco, um, Janet, Janet Viafana, who uh -huh. writes about street vendors and just hearing about like a lot of these folks are sustaining so much of community. Right. Mm -hmm. um, and so I see the, I see the ones that I know as family. How do you how do you navigate that? Like when folks are asking, hard. can you go here yeah. like random? Right. Yeah, it's hard. I mean, for the most part, I try to do it as random as possible. I mm -hmm. like to go to different areas, too. Not only in San Diego do I do the donations, actually. Uh, a handful of the ones that I do are here in LA, oh, LA okay. based, okay. Uh, because there's there's a larger population of street vendors over here. Okay, and so um, yeah, but there I do I do get a handful of requests. I won't lie. Um, for example, one of the most uh, recent incidents that happened with the uh, uh, taco stand and the taco truck. Which yes, tacos la huera. Yeah, um, that was a very highly requested. You know, like something that they wanted me to donate for. Mm -hmm. And so, yeah, I ended up uh, doing like a little fundraiser through Venmo and Cash App. We raised uh, almost $15,000 for them. Wow. Uh, so we gave them directly to, to the workers that were working that night. That's so awesome. Yeah. Yeah. So that one specifically generated attention because right. of everything happening. Yeah, yeah. yeah. so when, when videos go viral, like either like a street vendor, it, it's sad, but like these street vendors getting harassed, yeah. things like that. It's so um, wild how much they're under attack too by even folks who burglarize, yep. right? It's so frustrating it that anyone sense, would even yeah. like come up on someone who's literally just working hard. I mean, all of us are trying to survive, yeah, right? Um, yeah. And and it, it's unfortunate, but it's great that you were able to do that for the folks from yeah. La Huera at Whittier. Oh, definitely. Um, what is the? And I just thought of this. So, are you recognized by a street vendors? Or I know that yeah. um, I really appreciate also the anonymity of, of you making sure it's very difficult for a lot of folks to even yeah. want to be photographed, right? Like we don't want to like trivialize exactly. um, and 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 do that for folks. So, um, are, are they starting to recognize you? Do people know uh, you when you pull up? Or? Luckily, no. Okay. Uh, it's, it's strange enough. Like, no, I, I don't get recognized. I've only gotten recognized one time. I did. Okay. Uh, I remember it was last summer. It was a street vendor over by Los Callejones here in okay. L.A. Mm -hmm. Santi Ali, that was yeah. my first job, okay? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Y este, yeah, I remember I handed him the money and I was explaining to him, like, hey, like, this this comes from my followers. Like, there's just money donating. He's yeah. like, he's like, yo te sigo on TikTok. And wow. I was like, what? I was like, no way. He's like, yeah, yo te sigo. I'm like, wow, that's crazy. I was like, well, I mean, this is for you, my friend. So I'm sure he probably looked at your videos and was like, damn, imagine one day and it happened. Yeah, that 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 day was a trip for sure. Because was that's my initial thought. I was yeah. like, wow, like imagine him just like scrolling through and be like, man, maybe one day. Yeah. And then that one day happened. I don't know. It's just weird. That's just really weird. dope. So what is the process like? Is it ongoing? So I know you had a specific campaign for the folks at yes. La Huera. Yes. Is there like a specific area that folks can just continue to, like, to donate that yeah. you're always generating yeah. 
So, 100%. And you find it on TikTok. You have that. Yeah. Okay, okay. Yeah. All my info's on my TikTok, okay. Instagram, all that. Uh, people can donate through Venmo, Cash App. It's just a continuous thing. Like wow. my Venmo and Cash App is dedicated for street vendors. And you or just, just randomly one day, it's like, it's a Friday. I'm ready yeah, to do it. it. Yeah. I try to keep it random porque like I don't also want to like have a schedule. You go like, oh, like juice goes out on Thursdays and he's going to go, you know, yeah, something like yeah. that. So I just, I always like have these like safety measures in my head. So it's like, it's very random. doesn't matter where I go or what day it is. Like. I'll just do it. Yeah. So I, t- I, t- I typically tend to do a two to three donations every time I go. I try to at least. Okay. Every yeah. time you come to LA? Every or... time I come to LA or go in general to do donations. Oh, okay. But for the most is part Is that like LA, a week or is that like a month? That's like a week. Oh, wow. Yeah. I try to go like w- at least once a week. Wow. That's yeah. awesome. Yeah, that's that's really great. So where has this all this work taken you? I saw you were on Kelly Clarkson. <laughs> yeah. You got 1.6 million people who are out here supporting yeah. you and, and hoping that they can also donate yeah. to the cause that you're you're doing. So where is it taking you? Well, honestly, I don't know. It, it, it's taking me it's taking me to a ton of places. And I'm in like this the craziest position that I've ever been in my life. Mm-hmm. Like I'm a full time social media content creator, I guess. Wow. Now. Yes. Uh, I've been able to quit my nine to five job. And it's just a blessing. I didn't expect any of this. Like when I first started, I just did it because I was like, how cool would it be to help someone out? Like yeah. especially a street vendor. And where did you go after? So did you continue working at the gym or no. did you what, what did you do after so that happened? It was there was a lot going on at the time. Mm-hmm. So 2020 was when my son was born. And 2020 was when I lost my job at the same time. So um, later on in the year, when things started to reopen, it Mm -hmm. was like late 2020. uh, The gym was like, hey, like, we're going to need you back soon. Um, I know you still have technically uh, family leave you can use if you want to use it or you can Mm -hmm. come back to work. And I was like, you know what? I'm going to just use the family leave. And during that time, like those like that month, month and a half, I was like, man, like, I feel like TikTok could really work. I wasn't getting any brand deals. I wasn't like I wasn't making much. Mm -hmm. But the TikTok creator fund had just started. And that was like, that was like what was driving me. And I was that's like, what you get paid, right? Yeah, I was to... like, I was like, wow, like I made a few bucks off this video. Like it's the, the creator fund doesn't pay you very well. Mm-hmm. But when I saw those numbers adding up, I was like, maybe this could work out. It's just you're you're getting money yeah. for posting videos. I was yeah. like, I'm just posting these videos and I'm like getting paid for it. And I was like, ah, I'm I'm a big risk taker. Mm-hmm. And so like when I was I saw that I was like, I'm just gonna quit. And whatever happens, wow. happens. Like I had just, I was just relying on my unemployment money because I, I had just saved as much as I possibly could yeah. at the time. Y pues, yeah, I took that little leap of faith and, you know, things didn't really start working out until a few months later. Then I got my first ever brand deal and I was like, yeah. Like what this, was that like? Who reached out to you? It was a brand. Um, I'm over here like, who reached out? I'm taking notes. <laughs> it was a Dave. Uh, it was called Dave. Dave okay. Banking. It Dave was a, banking. it was like a credit debit card sort of banking app. Okay. And they reached out to me and they're like, "Hey, we want to offer you $2,800 for a TikTok." And I was like, "$2,800 for a TikTok? For one video?" For one video. I was like, "Oh my god." I freaked out. You said, out. "What do you want me to wear? I what do I do? Yeah, Sign no. me up. I'm here." <laughs> I was like, "Hey, take yeah, I'll do whatever." <laughs> no, but that when I saw that, I was like, "People are paying this much for a TikTok?" I was like, Imagine if I could just do this at least like once a month. And what'd you do in the TikTok? I'm trying to get to the nitty gritty of all the I details. I was just trying to promote it. I just had to promote the app. You said like, swipe on Day was, Financial. Basically, day I was banking. like, so Day Banking, this, this, and this. Sign up for free. You get a free $100 bonus. Wow. Da, 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 da. Man, Look at you. You're remember. doing the TikTok I'm now. Over here like, <laughs> <laughs> you're no. like, uh, pay me. <laughs> Man, for real, I need my back. Nah. <laughs> no, but yeah. And I was just so grateful for that. And it, it just, it really opened up my mind. I was like, if, if a brand is paying me, like, and I really, I didn't even have like a million followers at the time. I had mm-hmm. like maybe like uh, 600,000 followers. And I was like, you over here saying that like, number like is likely. No, I, <laughs> I guess, thought you were yeah, going to no, say like right. I had like 600. You know? <laughs> no, you're right. You're right. No, 600,000 is a lot of people. Yeah. But like, it's like, I thought like only the big creators with like millions and millions yeah. could get paid something like that. Mm-hmm. So it was just a shock to me. And then that's what really like opened my eyes. Like, wow, like something could really happen out of this so. yeah and at the same time you're 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 changing lives right yeah. you're really supporting no, yeah, folks out here that's what i'm doing it for that needed that needed the most Try or needed a, like that need that support especially with all the harassment that happens yep, 100 what was it like being with my girl kelly clarkson <laughs> kelly, i like wait, how was that kelly's actually I, yo, so nice i tried watching the art uh, the uh-huh. the interview and it's on peacock yo you girl hasn't gotten it? the free i haven't gotten the free trial yet but i was like damn i didn't want to watch it's it right. it's all right i didn't even pay for it either i'm I like damn you don't got a little clip on youtube 
YouTube. What's up, Peacock? Actually, it is on YouTube. It, I try. I typed in Jesus Morales, Kelly Clarkson. That's so interesting. It didn't come up I yet. Maybe they're still there. editing it, but also it's a whole production. Huh. So maybe let me not act like That's they're. Interesting. <laughs> no, but yeah, uh, she was so she was so kind. Mm. She was such a nice like just down to earth person. I, yeah. I was like, oh, what? That's cool. And um, I was like, yeah, my sister's a huge fan. And she's like, oh, tell your sister that. And I said hi. Oh. <laughs> yeah and uh yeah it was amazing i just still can't believe that i was that that's like huge for me yeah right? and i mean i'm sure she was there right like she had um yeah. I, I just remember the american idol days where she was on the low low and now look at her right so all of us Doing start in those areas and Doing hopefully the, the thing is the i feel like from what i learned from the work that you do is also just always giving back yep. right to folks like from the you you saw it, people doing it in restaurants for all these folks like hell you needed tips yep. in the moment too right shit i yep. can i can do with some tips right now yeah. um so it's beautiful that like the theme is just making sure to continue to give back that's all it is um and, and just love on people because the pandemic right. really fucked us up it really did yeah it did. and yeah. it's so beautiful to see that you came out of it doing all of this yeah you know what are your goals I, moving forward like what's your dreams i know i saw yeah. that you were um you were talking about uh advertising a scholarship fund for some students yeah, yeah, yeah. um so what what's next <clears throat> for you like what do you want to do from this where do you want to grow from this yes. you're young as hell how old are you again 25 25 25 yeah no yeah i i have a lot of dreams and a lot of goals mm -hmm. um you know with with my TikTok account in specific, like I do want to be able to say one day that we gave a million dollars back to street vendors. Um, I would just want to continue giving back in general, uh, not only for the Latino community, but mm -hmm. just the world in general. You know, mm -hmm. there's, there's always, there's never a wrong time to spread love, you know? Yeah, definitely. And so, you know, I, I grew up watching these creators doing crazy things like buying people cars, buying people homes. Like, I want to do that. I want to be like the Mr. Beast or like the David Dobrik, but like, I want to be the brown version of them. Yeah. I want to be that Mexican Mr. Beast. Este. Yeah, I mean, long term goal. I also want to get into the acting industry. That's also been like a dream. You of better mine. manifest it right here because hey, I'm manifesting there with you. You trying to start a production company I or what's swear. up? Hey, what's up? <laughs> hey, you, you got my number. <laughs> That's really no, cool. But yeah, yeah. I just, these are all just dreams that I've had. And I, I believe that they can happen, obviously, over time. But oh, yeah, I'm just taking it one day at a time and just praying for the best yeah that's yeah. really cool is there any specific actor you want i want to get into you now Ooh. right so is there any specific actor you'd oh. ever want to act with oh my god i mean there's a ton um who's one that i just right off the top of my head oh this one's tough you just really put me on the i'll spot. help you out mine is robert de niro robert de niro i love robert Ooh. de niro listen i used to have that's a crush a on one. him and now he's like a little bit more of like a grandpa yeah. yeah shout out to you baby um but i just love everything he's come out in so if i could be yeah. in something with him and just be funny with him i would love that 100 <laughs> percent. no i mean i i used to want to like i loved comedy movies mm -hmm. jim carrey was a big inspiration oh for my me gosh as well. he's he's jim like carrey. Uh, the mask is yeah. the first one i think yeah of. He exactly was, he's wildly funny and so wildly talented yeah no. so you want to be in comedy comedy i want to do, do a little bit of everything like for i also love al pacino mm. al pacino oh my god all the classics right all the, classics, all the mafia yeah. movie classics scarface the world is yours here for it that's really cool mm -hmm. i want to be yeah. an actor too so maybe we could do it together what do you do outside of this project so you have all these brand deals yeah. you're able to sustain um yourself with with tiktok yes. so what else yes. do you do like right now how many brand partners do you have or what's what, what what's the day in the life of jesus oh man of juice or however you like to <laughs> yeah call. juice uh so um it's it's the day-to-day -day is for the most part it's just emails and things like that oh, uh, so like um brand deals it's not every day mm -hmm. um sometimes it'll be a busy week sometimes it won't but yeah. uh some i think i'm working on like currently two or three partnerships at the time and, okay um, i've got like a phone call tomorrow for potentially a fourth one okay so, can you name them or are they secretive right now uh i actually just signed an nda for that oh, damn. So, oh as much my as I bad that, juice uh, i thought we were homies okay <laughs> damn when the camera cuts ah. <laughs> No, so, um, the one I just, the, you mentioned the scholarship one. I just yeah. finished a uh, partnership with McDonald's. They okay. were, they're doing a, uh, a scholarship fund for $100,000 for Latino students who are okay. looking to go to college. Um, that's the one I just wrapped up. But yeah, I mean, for the most part, it's just like talking with brands, talking with um, agencies and things like that. It's not on a day-to-day -day basis. Outside of that, uh, it's a lot more relaxed. I love playing video games. Okay. Um, I love watching shows. And What I, do you watch? Uh, I just finished watching Ozark. Oh my gosh! Ozark is such a I'm on like episode three, season one. Like I started really late, yeah. and I heard the new season. The new season came out, right? 
We'll actually have one more episode. Bill. Oh, okay. I'm, I'm excited to win, like finish that yeah, one. Yeah, it's, it's actually good really good. Mm -hmm. I, the first time I tried watching it, it didn't hook me, but I actually really like it. It's a good show. It's a good yeah. show if you get into it and you really like pay attention. It's it's it's. I feel like Twitter makes me watch new shows, and I'm like a new <laughs> tweeter, which I'm that. I'm late. Yeah. Um, but a lot of the memes are so funny. They're like Ozark's a great show, but they, they needed lighting. Or I forgot what yeah, people are so tweeting. Dark. It's it so is, dark. It is, but it no also reason. goes with the vibe. It does. Yeah. It's very dark. So you like 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 uh like Breaking Bad and those I types of shows. I was just about to say. I and binged that during the pandemic Ozark too. Like Late as hell, but yep. <laughs> such a good show. I've watched it like three or four times. Yeah. It's, it's, it's so you really Netflix, show. you Netflix play video show. games. I love playing video games. Yeah. I just started streaming on Twitch, uh, oh, okay. so people can check me out. Twitch TV. Juice. You better work. Um, but yeah, other than that, that's something I just recently got into. Like I'm trying to like venture into different sort of things. Um, I also love working out. I work okay. out. I try to work out almost every day. Okay. Uh, me and my girl. Uh, we go to the gym together. And, and what whatnot. does she do? What tell us about your boo? It's Valentine's at, season, yes, okay? Yes. Uh, she's a stay-at-home mom. Uh, very blessed to be able to to say that. You know, she Damn. she stays at home and just really takes care of our little boy. Uh, when I'm not around, when I'm doing donations or whatever, traveling. Yes, yeah, stay, yeah. Uh, other than that, we I mean we just we go work out together. We go out to the beach, hang out with our little boy, yeah. play with him, and uh, just trying to make. Just trying to give him the best life possible. Just living life. Yeah, yeah, just living life. I love it's it. Crazy. I'm here for it. <laughs> so let's get into food because at Ooh. LA Taco, we love to talk about food. About and food. you specifically support vendors that I'm yes. sure sell the most amazing food yes. in Los Angeles. Mm -hmm. So who is your favorite street vendor? Oh, my God. And this, I know that's a hard question. <sighs> hard but what's one that you like? Tried the food and you're like, this hit. Bro, uh, I think he's in San Diego. This okay. guy has this crazy cart. Super established. Este, he sells, it's like a hot cheeto elote. Ooh. It's like he literally rips open the, the bag of hot cheetos, throws elote, the queso, todo. So it's oh like an esquite inside yes, of a hot cheeto bag. Yes. I, I know people are doing the little flakes. I'm like, okay, uh -huh. ASMR. People are doing right. the little flakes on top of <laughs> I was like, I just, ooh, like, ooh. I'm a little excited myself. Oh, um, but people do like the the crushed up on top. Yes. But this food straight, 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 straight up, in the up bag. throws. Yeah, he doesn't crush the Cheetos. Is nada. Watering. Yes, it's fire. Um, other than that, I love me some raspados. Um, What's your favorite flavor? Tamarindo. Tamarindo yeah. too. Okay, like Felipe. Yeah, tamarindo is okay. the best. If not the blue one, I don't even know what flavor that is. But the blue one's really good. And blue's the color. Raspberry. Yeah. yeah blue. Yeah. Blue. It's sweet. It's sugar water. <laughs> it's good. Let's be honest. <laughs> you like it for the color. Yep. Yep. That's, no. And then what about your favorite food in Los Angeles? <sighs> Or SD, I know SD has really they do good. Have some good food. My family's from all of Baja California, yeah. and so whenever we're like going, we're driving, we got to do a pit stop, you know. No, so yeah. Where Where do you love to get your food at? Or does your boo cook really well? She does cook really well. Okay. Pero when she doesn't cook, I really love uh, seafood. There's a okay. place called TJ Oyster Bar. Mm -hmm. Honestly, I don't know if I go back for the ceviche or if I go back for their salsa that they put on the ceviche, but it's busting. It's like, fire. I don't what know kind how... of um, ceviche is it? Uh, ceviche de camarón. But they like que estilo de me. You know they got like oh, Sinaloa, yeah, you know. Dude, I it's have just no you idea. said it's ceviche. It's just ceviche. That's all I know. It's good. It can be from wherever. And it's fresh. As long as it's fire. We yeah. love it. And what about your favorite taco? Mm, taco de asada. Taco de asada. Really? Actually, no. I've been leaning towards adobada a lot more recently. Okay. I've been an asada like guy from. I used to hate. Pa I mean, adobada is pastor, Me right? Yep. Was it? I'm. I'm, I'm getting mad at me. Figure that I feel out. like Does all the writers at Ali Taco right now are going to be like, Laura, what's up? <laughs> Position available. I know. <laughs> <laughs> but um, yeah, I used to be a hater for some reason, but yeah. I've, been, I've been dabbling with a little pastor yep. here and there now too. Yep. That only happened really recently when I moved to San Diego. They okay. were like, oh, you got to try aloada, pastor, whatever. I was like, ah, like I don't like that one. Yeah. But then they're like, no, just eat it. Try it from here. I was like, damn, that's kind of fire. You're like, it's fire. Yeah, it's kind of fire. I'm here for yeah. it. I love it. <laughs> Where are the tacos better in Chicago or Los Angeles? You know, it's funny. Um, there's actually a survey and i think chicago ranks number four in the entire united states there's a lot of there's a lot of rasa over in chicago ah uh, yeah there's i've been lot. i've been several times and i actually love it and i see people that have looked like me it's so it's fire. nice yeah. yeah no it's dope i i can't say i don't know it's like a chicago's got some bomb ass mexican food and you so grew up there yeah so, so it's I kind of have like a bias towards them yeah but um I don't know. San Diego and LA also got, they yeah, got it on. You, they're, in, they're in deep competition. Yeah. Our producer Something. just messaged me saying that El Pastor is not the same as Carna de Bala, so my bad. Is it, it not? It isn't, no. I swear to God it is. I know. Some taqueros have told me it is, though, but maybe they're just like, bitch, get out of my <laughs> face. Like, you you need to know this. That's according to Google, though, and Google, who's mm. running Google? <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but thank you so no, much for being for here with us. Me. Yes. I'm, I'm, please tell our viewers where we can continue to donate if yes. you have that information with you. Uh, if you guys like to donate to help out any street vendors in the future videos you guys can donate on venmo or cash app all my infos in my tiktok bio uh, i also have a direct link uh, if you click the little link in my bio uh, if it just makes you feel a little bit safer so you don't click the wrong profile there's a direct link that goes straight to my venmo and cash app and that's at j-u-i-x j-u-i-x-x 
E. X X, not triple X, baby. Double X. Not triple X. J U I double X E is for juice. Well, thank you so much, Jesus. Thank you so much. Like we does, I wish you all the luck with continuing to do the work that you're doing. Thank you. I appreciate you. We're about to go on a break and we'll be right back, y'all. Y'all know me, y'all know I fuck with a taco de barbacoa. Let's check it out. Reportando en vivo desde Bell Gardens, I am here at Tamales Elena y Antojitos, and we're going to get to know the folks, the magical hands, the reinas costeñas afro-mexicanas behind Tamales Elena y Antojitos, episode 5 of Hanging with Taqueros. Y'all ain't ready. Sponsored by White Claw. Please tell me your name and a little bit about the space. Hi, Hazel. My name is Jurep. Maria. Maria. <laughs> Who is Elena? Ella. It's my mom. Uh-huh. So tell me a little bit about la comida que hacen. Que cocinan? Que es lo más rico? Uh, lo más rico, bueno, lo más, mi favorito son los pozoles. You know, they're very traditional from where we're from, la, from la costa de Guerrero. You can never go wrong, porque tenemos tres opciones. Es el tradicional, que es el blanco, el rojo y el verde. My personal favorite would be the green one. We, every day. <laughs> every day is jueves de pozole, okay? So we can get a little pozolito right now. Because, you know, if you're a real one, you like pozole during the heat. Talk to me about the pescadilla. I was learning about this earlier. Yeah, our pescadillas, they're uh, very traditional in Guerrero. Over there, you find them everywhere. There's ladies selling, in a, uh, you know, you're taking sun in the beach, they ladies selling this out of the basket. It's stewed fish inside a tortilla, and then we fry the whole taco. And it's so delicious. Is your mouth watering? Because mine is. La reina de tamales, Elena y antojitos, is not here with us, Elena herself. But who would you say is her favorite? Her baby boy. None, none of us. It's her baby boy over there. You got baby boy in the house. Yeah. Baby boy, you want to come out? Baby, baby Juan baby is Elena's favorite. What's your name? My name is Juan Ulises. She comes in on Mondays, check all the food, and ask if Juan has eaten. Have you fit my baby yet? Juan better be fed out here, okay? Elena takes care of Juan. Juan, what is your favorite grub? Los tacos de barbacoa are pretty, pretty far. Those just changed my life. <laughs> Uh-uh. Be real with me. Who is the who's the best cook? Me. <laughs> <laughs> All right, y'all. We about to fight. Just kidding. <laughs> I'm the head of the tamale prepping and tamale making. Okay. Yes. If you want things done with the tamales, I'm the one. We got a princesa de los tamales, y'all. All right, Jurep. I know you throw down. I know you throw down. What do you make? What are you the mastermind at? But I'm the master of the prep. I'm the one that does a lot of our co-op tacos. The moles, the pozole, <laughs> and the pescadillas. <laughs> Tamales Elena y Antojitos would not be what it is without them too. Y'all want some fire pozole, y'all want some fire tamales, some moles. Y'all gotta come through and check it out. What's up, folks? My name is Laura Tejeda, and I'm a reporter for LA Taco. Well, let's see, we're gonna have a dance battle contest at the end. Wow, was a grito with a Tarzan spin. Today, I'm super excited because I'm with Villas Tacos Los Angeles in Highland Park, and we're gonna get to know the taqueros behind the bomb tacos with the support from our sponsor, White Club. Can you do a grito? Yeah, it's not as loud as my brother. Yeah. <laughs> give it a try for us. He's like, let me let you know now, I can't do it. Okay, okay. 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 Oh, that's my husband. <laughs> Who's the best dancer on the team? I'm probably the best dancer on this team. Here. <laughs> I'm gonna have to say 
it's like a tie between my dad and my brother. Okay. Thing goes neck to neck with the both victors. Oh no, no, no. He's always had that talent for dancing. I always have to say big victor. He is not. <laughs> so you do my work. Hey, 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 hey. Favorite taco aside from Vias tacos? I would have to say Jack in the Box. <laughs> Jack in the Crack. Hell yeah! Do you know? And it's really good with some taco sauce. Let's go to Avenue 26, just lay at night. I like lobster tacos. <laughs> lobster, we got some more bougie on the Vias team. You know? We have free like that. Free taco? Oh, that's an easy one. I go to my grandma's house and then she gets down. What is your favorite white cloth? They're right here. The, uh, watermelon is is my go-to on Fridays. My favorite white cloth favorite is definitely mm -hmm. the watermelon. Watermelon. Why? I just I feel like it gives me like you know that watermelon paleta feel like that one. That gives me that feel. The watermelon paletas. <laughs> Saturdays and Sundays. It's gotta be mango. I gotta go with the mango. Yeah. It's refreshing. And when I'm trying to keep it chill, Monday through Sunday, it's gotta be the mango. Mango. Why? Mango, yeah. It's just the flavor of the mango. <laughs> I'll go with the mango. Shout out to LA Taco, shout out to White Claw, thanks for coming. Thanks for all the love on behalf of me and all my beautiful team. I wish you the best in life and I wish you a happy life. Big out, be a soccer in the building. What is up, folks? We are back with Eddie Lynn. He is an OG LA food writer who encourages everybody to eat chicken feet at least once. Welcome to the Mod Pod Studios, LA Taco Live, Eddie. Hey. Thank you for having me as a guest. I, I'm so excited. We're so excited to talk to you about this awesome new piece. Before we get into that, though, tell us about yourself, Eddie. Who are you? I'm That's a, a deep question. Uh, <laughs> I know. Hmm. What's your age, sign, location? Just I'm going to look at my navel and uh, ponder that. <laughs> um, well, I'm actually uh, a food writer based in L.A. Mm -hmm. I started in 2004 with my blog, DeepEndDining.com. I specialized in weird food. Like, I, I put that in quotes now because back then I would call it weird food. But really, um, it's not weird to the people who eat mm -hmm. that food. It's just kind of unfamiliar food. Yeah, to, to, different. Yeah. yeah. And, and all of us have our unfamiliar foods. But mm -hmm. So I, I didn't like calling it weird food um, after a while. But it was kind of how people would reference me. That's like my niche. Um, so, so you've been writing since 2004. Yeah, 2004. I, I wasn't writing about restaurants. I was writing about specific dishes like okay. Filipino balut, uh, uh, you know, menudo, um, Korean uh, sanakji, which is the live octopus tentacles. Mm. Anything that was really kind of far out and interesting and uncommon, I would I would love um, to to tackle as a as a topic. And it's so wild for me to hear you say that menudo was one of those dishes. Menudo back in two thousand four, there was not a lot of menudo representation on the internet. Unless, believe it or not, unless you like were coming from a family that cooked it right. Did you have red or white? Um, well, uh, it was the red. Yeah, it was definitely mm, the red. Okay. Um, I uh, the first time I had it was at uh, one of my really good friends' house. Uh, she's Mexican and mm -hmm. her father made it mm -hmm. and he like it basically ruined me for any other menudo you know what I mean it's like yeah. if you have homemade menudo made you know really lovingly yeah with all the ingredients um even the the, the pata right the yep. like like oh, you know I, I don't find that a lot in in restaurants you gotta but. come over with me to East LA and we'll show you some but okay. I feel you my mom's is definitely better than the restaurants too so I that's know. awesome yeah. well thank you for being here we do want to get into your piece your Ali Taco Guide to Lunar New Year how to eat your way to better luck Happy a, New Year. Happy by, New Year. Oh, I have something for you. A red envelope? A red envelope. This is, I'm Can so I just excited. Yes, thank you so much. Let, hold on. Uh, don't get too excited. You'll probably get two tacos at Jack in the Box for that. <laughs> What's in Listen, it? Eddie, how did you know? Okay, I fuck with taco, Jack in the Box tacos heavy. Oh, you do? And oh my uh, the God. Buttermilk Ranch I don't tell on a drunk I don't, night? I don't tell people. that. That's you like too? my. Oh, my God. <laughs> People make, yeah, yeah. Yeah, I mean, people expect you probably to be like above yeah. it, right? Fuck all of that. Exactly. We're here for Jack in the Box. Oh my God. Now we got to go um, together at some we point. We do. Okay? We totally do. <laughs> well, thank you for my lucky red envelope. I am unmarried, so I know that I'm allowed to open it. We have um, Lunar New Year events at, at my oh, other great, job. Oh, great, great. Um, but yeah, let's get into Lunar New Year for the folks watching who aren't familiar. Yeah, okay, this is good because um, 
how to greet because uh, is is one of the things you know, saying Happy New Year. Well, the the uh, the famous. Uh, Chinese comedian uh, Ronnie Chen. He mm-hmm. has a he has a really funny bit. Yeah. Uh, about how Chinese people say "gong xi fa cai" or "gong he fa choi" in mm-hmm. Cantonese uh, to their friends and family, um, which essentially means "hope you get rich," Ooh. right? <laughs> Hope you get rich. And and it's not exactly that translated. That "gong he fa choi" uh, actually means "congratulations, um, be prosperous," mm. or you know, "wish you wealth" or whatever. Um, however, we do say Happy New Year, which is Xing Nian Kuai La. That's literally Happy New Year. So okay. Xing Nian Kuai La, we actually do say. But yes, the go-to is Hope you get rich. <laughs> I love it. I'm yeah. here for it. I know there's different. Um, there's other cultures that also celebrate Lunar New Year in different ways. But I learned that yeah. some cultures have to you have to bow specifically when you receive your red envelope. So oh, yeah. I've been learning a lot. Yeah, so it usually is from the uh, the elder to the younger, you know, children. Unmarried so, people. Yeah, or unmarried. Right? Yeah. See, you came for me. You knew. You didn't yeah. know. You, you didn't know, but you knew. I'm an elder, too. <laughs> I'm an elder to you. <laughs> I'm here for it. So let's get into your piece. Let's talk about these lucky foods. You wrote this piece, and I going through it, my mouth was watering. Really? Yes. But what what even what the poon choy? Well, some of them were some of them were I was like, okay, let's see. Yeah, some of them were menudo adjacent. <laughs> but what was it like writing this piece? How, how did you get into Well, I, I've been living Chinese New Year's ever since, yeah. you know, I was born. <laughs> so, I, I I grew up with a lot of this stuff. Um, however, th- there are definitely a lot of dishes to navigate. Um, but the thing is uh we gotta uh, kind of set establish some you know groundwork mm-hmm. here. Um, I actually call a, a Chinese New Year Chinese Rule Year because there's a lot of rules when it comes not just food, but like you know you can't wash your yourself, you can't wash your hair on the day of New wow. Year's, you can't cut your hair, you can't use any uh, knives or scissors because you're cutting away fortune. Oh. And um, so you're the most luckiest on New Year. Yeah, you just you uh, if you're gonna do anything like house cleaning, washing, bathing, whatever, do that before. Don't do anything on the day, Mm -hmm. and then then you can resume on the second day. Okay. So when it comes to food, you're supposed to consume a lot of this is actually consumed on on New Year's Eve, Um, but there's a two week window for Chinese um, Korean celebrate Solal, uh, which is the Korean Lunar New Year for three days. Mm Um, and uh, the Vietnamese celebrate Tet for uh, a week. Okay. Um, everyone has their uh, delicacies, their you know their the good luck foods, um, but but a lot of it is based on homophones. Okay. Words that sound alike but have different meanings, and um, for example, Nian Gao Nian Gao in Chinese is um, year cake or year. New Year cake. And nian also can mean, <clears throat> excuse me, sticky. And nian gao happens to be sticky, okay. too. It's like a glutinous, <clears throat> excuse me, um, I have some water here. I'm getting excited talking about this nian gao. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but the main reason it's lucky is nian gao also is the homophone for year higher. So it, it means higher year after year. So it's kind of like a a nice, um, you know, wish on someone to achieve higher status or higher wealth year after year. Okay. And, and which is why people eat Nian Gao. Um, and then there are other things um, like uh, dumplings, um, which, which isn't a homophone food, but it, if, if you look at a dumpling, uh, apparently it looks like a Chinese gold ingot, you okay. know. If you Google in a gold ingot, it actually does look look like that. Um, so it obviously comes from a long time ago when okay. you know gold ingots were more common. Um, now it's going to look like a Bitcoin maybe or, or something. <laughs> but um, that's why dumplings are served in mass quantity because apparently the more you eat, the richer you get. So you got to stuff your face on Lunar New Year. Oh, yeah. You know, that reminds me of the time I ate. Uh, at a dumpling contest against Joey Chestnut, like literally, you know Joey Chestnut, the, yeah. the king of eating Coney Island hot dogs and stuff. I actually, um, he ate 380 in 10 minutes. 10 minutes. I ate 38. Oh, uh, okay. So a tenth or uh, 10% of that? A te- yeah. So 
in in ten minutes he already ate thirty. In wow. one minute he already ate thirty eight. I probably can eat. In one minute, maybe eight. So I commend you for 38. Oh my God, I thought I was going to die. <laughs> what kind of dumplings were they? What were they filled with? They were they were the basic pork and mm. uh, onion or chive or something like that. That sounds fire. Oh you also gosh. talk about spring rolls, longevity noodles. Yes, longevity noodles. That That's a good one um, because it's a scary one. Mm -hmm. Like it's, it's usually it's yi mian, um, which is a long, extra long noodle. Uh, made with, I think, a sodium bicarbonate, okay. which is a, a, it's a, it's an ingredient that makes it springy and also makes it more durable so it doesn't break easily. And that's the key. You don't want to snap your longevity noodle because that symbolizes, the noodle itself symbolizes your life. So that's another rule. It's another rule. So, so you, so you want to eat it in one noodle. slurp. You, you got to like slurp it down. Don't, don't cut it. Don't bite it. Slurp it I all. I would struggle so much with that. Oh, you gotta, you gotta do the ultimate noodle pole and then down. I wish we had down. a noodle right here so I could practice. Because <laughs> yeah. what? If you break it, it's gonna be. Like, too, just thinking of the right. yummy. <laughs> no, seriously, it'll be like a, a Chinese. I would be like, <laughs> oh yeah, yeah. But it would be like a Chinese final destination if you really? if you broke it. it something battle. Oh. So if you at the dinner table and you fucking up and chewing up all the noodles. Yeah, and then all of a sudden you like, get hit by a car. <laughs> You know why? <laughs> you cut the longevity noodle. Exactly. Wow, that's dope. It's well, you know, this is all superstition. Yeah. And, and but hey, listen, and... I believe it. The other day, I accidentally dropped some salt, and I accidentally put it over both my shoulders because I forgot which one okay. I had to throw it over. So oh, you I know what? The, the the other thing I, I, you kind of reminded me of um, is people. Okay, so this is the year of the tiger, mm -hmm. right? So a lot of people kind of misconstrue like the year that they were born. And the current year as their year, like so for example, if you were born the year of the tiger, mm -hmm. and it, it's currently the year of the tiger, you think, oh, this is my year, right? I mean, it, it kind of sounds good. Yeah, like I'm a tiger. The year is the, the year tiger. of the tiger. Mm -hmm. I'm this. I'm I'm this fire. This this is it. But that's not true. It's actually counter what you think. It's actually a bad year for anyone. Yeah, under the. And and why that, is that? Because there's this god or deity or some. You know, celestial body or energy force. Who I like, said, don't let's not be stricken down. Yes, I'm so, just kidding. <laughs> basically, he 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 doesn't like people who are born on the that year of the That's you know that for whatever weird reason. So you got to kind of do things to you know. I got to wear like a, a rooster on my wrist or something. If it's your year. Yeah, if it's my well, I'm a monkey, and it's also bad for monkeys too and snakes. So the year not, of the tiger yeah, is? Yeah, it's not just... so. Is it so, bad for the year of the horse? Uh, Karen just... Our producer just reminded me that 1990 is year of the horse. That's my year. Okay. And I remember that because there's this Chinese Mexicali restaurant my family used to go to in Downey. Uh -huh. And they always had the breakdown of what year was which animal. So I used to trawl up around the, the, the <laughs> restaurant because I'm like, I'm a horse. I'm the year of the horse. That's cute. In 2026 so is apparently... Thank you, Karen, for this information. So I'm not going to be lucky. Can you send me the things I got to wear? Because yeah, I am yeah, superstitious. I, I'll tell you. But but I'm gonna tie this in with the Super Bowl oh, Sunday, okay? Right, because we stay relevant out here. Eddie. I know we do. We got to stay current. <laughs> so we're the Rams, but our opponent is the Bengals. They're t Bengals a tiger. So who do you, so you think the they, Rams are gonna well, win? They think. Are we that predicting right now? We're we're predicting that the Bengals are gonna fall under Thai shoes, bad luck curse. Wow, because they're representing because the they're a tiger. The God does not like. What's the name of the God? Uh, you know? Well, it, it's it's a, 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 a Thai Thai Shu, I think. Tai, um, is the uh, there's actually sixty of these Thai Shu deity type. Oh, okay. Uh, yeah, there's sixty of them, and this particular one represents zodiacs. Okay. The zodiac. So so there's a there's a Feng Shui one too, but wow. this one is the zodiac one, and he or it or whatever doesn't like any one born un under that current Anything one connected to the tigers so so i'm 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 saying I'm over here making it more than an <laughs> i know but i'm saying if we're following this guideline or this rule the Bengals are gonna lose wow so right? if any of y'all are betting out there eddie lynn said it here don't come for him if it's if they win but well our, we're, we're talking to ram fans right <laughs> yeah true you're right Hopefully. you're repping the right team yeah yeah that's that thank you for breaking down that history for us i'm learning a lot right now i want to know what your favorite lucky food is you told me you ate oh. 38 dumplings are do you is that your oh, favorite i love food? dumplings yeah. i love noodles um I, I love fish fish is another one 
it's really, really, really hard for for me. But if I if it was one of those, you had to choose one. Mm-hmm. It would probably be noodles. Yeah, noodles. I, the long because noodles. there's all kinds of different noodles. What do you, you know? like? Like, what do you, how do you like your noodles? Uh, I usually like them uh, pan fried. Okay. Or or wok fried. Mm. Um, with uh, I currently really like this cumin lamb noodle at uh, this restaurant in Monterey Park called Noodle Art. Mm-hmm. Shout out to Noodle Art. Yeah, I haven't been yet, but I've written all the pieces or yeah. I've re- read all the pieces about them. And they they do I it by hand. They do it. They they there there's a there's a guy who just pulls noodles all day long, and he and he does it to order. So it's not it's already fresh. made. You know, before you walk in, you order it, they make it. That's what they I remember it. reading, that you got to go with patience because this yeah. is made fresh daily. They're getting faster, though. Yeah. But, but yeah. Dang. So your favorite is the the noodles from Noodle Art? Yeah, the cumin lamb. Cumin lamb. Yeah, that yeah. sounds fire. It's funky. I like that. I like funky stuff. Okay. What's the funkiest food you've ever eaten? I thought you were going to ask me the funkiest taco. Okay, let's do that. Let's okay. do that. You were ready. Eddie said, uh, it's LA taco. Yeah, it's LA taco. <laughs> What's your, funky, your favorite funkiest taco? Okay, I, I, I love the... the Taco de Ojos and, and Labio at Lily's in Santa Barbara. Okay, Eddie getting a little erotic. He uh, likes lip tacos and eye tacos. Yeah. Okay, for Valentine's Day or what? You're going to buy your, your boo some taco de labio? Yes. You're going to give no, her some taco she, de labio? she's vegan, no? so <laughs> we, we, we can't do that. Oh, damn. Yeah, I know, I know, I know. Yo, that's interesting. She's vegan and you out here deep end dining? I know, and I eat it all. That's there, good. There was you know, a, the, differences are good. Yeah. <laughs> I, I did subject her to sitting in front of raw pig brains one time and i'll never do it again was she pissed she was a trooper i have to say <laughs> that's and true stephanie. love <laughs> well shout out to stephanie hey, for being stephanie. a trooper eddie i had so much fun talking with you we need to have you back to talk more about the amazing yeah. foods that you write about thank you for joining us here at la taco live uh, awesome we're gonna go ahead and take it to break and we'll be right back y'all don't spend your red envelope in one place i will <laughs> i didn't open it is that bad luck no We'll be right back. I'm gonna open this excitedly. What up, I'm Maddie Matheson. Oh, and I'm Vanny, and I'm really cold. Yeah, he's really cold. We just ate the best tacos in LA. With LA Taco! LA Taco's number one, baby. World peace. Let's go. Burritos once upon a time, eh? that's what I did. Taco, enchilada, torta, burrito, pozole. To love al pastor, some places just don't get it quite right. Mista cranchera, papas y frijoles, chicharrón. We're foodies, can you yeah. tell? Yeah, <laughs> torta de calabaza. Quesadilla. I like Pozole. a good menu of the sala. Birria. Oh, Welcome to the valley, man. Welcome I know. The, valley. <laughs> <laughs> the great one ate, man. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> What's up, folks? My name is Laura, and I'm a reporter from LA Taco. Having visions, you know, <laughs> psychedelically. Okay, we get those taco visions. Content, content, <laughs> content. <laughs> I'm here with some of the best flautas in Los Angeles, none other than Los Dorados LA. We're super excited to be getting to know you a little bit more today with the support from White Claw. So, Steven, tell us a little bit about your tacos. They're, they're Mexico City style flautas. The barbacoa comes from my father in law's the style from Texcoco. Okay. The salsas represent whole, the whole of Mexico because they have a little bit of everything in them. Okay, Tere, 
¿Usted sabe cómo hacer el grito del famoso Vicente Fernández? No soy tan gritona, ¿eh? ¿No? Uno, dos, tres. ¡Ey! ¡She better work! ¡Ok! ¡We love it! No, 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 let's do it again, let's do it again. Ah, that shit was whack. Yes. Okay, we love that grito, little giggle. Okay, grito giggle up in the house. You know what? I don't even know how it goes, but Steven, can you show me how? Can you please show me how? Okay, you know what? Hey, it was a white cup. Quién es el mejor bailador? Steven. Por qué? No sé, él tiene un espíritu alegre, muy amable, muy carismático. Undecisive, undecisive, but I think I could get a little more done, Steven. Okay. Uh, you know, Pablo wears these like tight little pants and shit. Laura, Laura, Laura. You know, he shakes his booty in there. Sometimes I'm just like, damn, dude, I can't compete. So I... let's call him out. Let's call him out. Ooh, Steven, you're being called out for a battle. Hey, let's cue music. Tere, homegirl Tere over here might be the best dancer on the team, but you didn't hear it from me. Awesome. Okay, so, you know, we asked you a lot of great questions, but we didn't ask you what your favorite White Claw favor is. The mango flavor. Okay. Very refreshing. Goes really well with the flautas. It's tangerine, you know? It's just tangerine. I, I like it. Watermelon. Watermelon, por qué? Oh, Cheers. Cheers, okay. Salud. Salud. There you have it, folks. We just finished up with the family from Los Dorados, Los Angeles. Shout out to Steven, Pablo, and Tere. Shout out to Sarah's Market for allowing us to record in front of their bomb store. And as always, shout out to White Claw for sponsoring Hanging with Taqueros. We'll see you next time, LA Taco fam. Y'all, we're back. We just got down with such a dope segment with Eddie Lynn about the piece he wrote for LA Taco about Lunar New Year, so make sure to check that out. And next up, I'm super excited because here at the studio, we're actually going to be tuning in with Memo Torres, who's over at an event with Rockstar LA Taco Revolution Carts and Angel City Market in Lenox, where they're coming together tonight to celebrate the winners of the first five street legal tamal carts. Memo's at the event right now, and he's actually there with some folks, so we're going to get to know a little bit about how the event is going and what's going down. What's up, Memo? What's up, Laura? Can you see me? Live can, and yes, I can see you live and direct. You better work. What up? Oh, uh, you don't even know. They got a general in the background. Tu I'm boom, ready. Boom, mami, so, mami, mami. we're here. We're here at La Feria. It's where they host Angel City Market. And we're down in Lenox, San Rafael Inglewood Boulevard. We'll be here till 9 p.m. And we're celebrating the giveaway of these dope ass, tricked out tamal carts that are street legal. We got with us right now Tamales Omeka. You see her hustling, serving up tamales. And these are free right now. So if you guys want to come through, we'll be here till 9. And we got plenty of all. Yes. Plenty of tamal car vendors. So we're here with Junia. Yes. Junia, how you doing? I'm doing well, thank you. So how, tell me, how does this feel? You got a... Amazing, unreal, honestly. Like it's just so, uh, it's a thrill for sure. Um, and just to be a part of it all, it's just been such a ride. Uh, to see it come together all the way around, it's just been, um, I'm honored to be here. I really am. Awesome, and, and tell me, tell me about your tamales, because you were telling me right before we went live, she was telling me about everything she puts into this tamal, and it's nuts. This little tamal husk has so much in there that goes there. So much. What and else? I see for everyone, but mine in particular, I make the masa from scratch. Um, every single tamal has its own stock, um, just because that's basically how I want to cater to them. Um, the fillings are all different. Um, and yeah, it just goes into like the labor of like the masa, the stock, you know, the teeth and uh, adding the fat and then the fillings, which I saute from scratch. Um, and then you have to put them all together, and, and you know, it, it's hungry. a whole crap. <laughs> I'm hungry too, shit. Let me try one, let me try one. Pull one out. Of course, Memo's out here getting ready. Laura, I know you're uno. jealous because you're stuck in the studio. Right, traeme uno, wey. 
<laughs> I might have to try to sneak one over to the studio after this. <laughs> yes, you will. Oh my goodness. Alright, this is my first tamal. I've tasted tonight. Are you having it with me? Yes, I am. Yeah. Look at her. Yeah. Look at her. She's got all her utensils. Alright. First First bite and everything. Coming right off the hunt. All right. I don't use a fork. I just. You don't need a fork. Oh, no. Look at that. Ooh, Ooh, can you see that? Yes, I see that All calientito. Right. <laughs> what kind of tamal is it? <laughs> Salud. Salud. Yeah, what, what kind of tamal is it? This is el rey. Que el rey. Is, uh, like, you know, cranberry beef, which tends to be a little bit creamier and a little bit sweeter. Um, Charred jalapenos and Oaxaca cheese. Ooh. All right. Go for it. Cranberry beans, shark jalapenos, and Oaxacan beans. Yum. Oh my god. <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> I feel sorry for you, Laura. I'm upset. I feel bad for you. I am upset. Oh my god. I want to try that charred we'll jalapeno. Come over to Laura, right? <laughs> oh my god. Look at that. Look at that. Laca right there. Que rico. Oh my god. Thank you so much, Junior. Thank you. We're going to move on and meet some of the other vendors, but congratulations. Where can people find you? Um, honestly, on Instagram right now, I'm still trying to allocate myself into like a, uh, kind of like a more permanent spot, but for right now, Instagram, and then once I, I get a little bit more of like a hold of, you know, where I can get situated within the permits, then I'll be announcing where I will be popping up throughout the LA County area. Perfect. So stay tuned for Tamales Olmeca and where it's going to be popping up. Let's show you. Thank you so much. You. I'm gonna eat this, but let's show everybody the scene right here. We got a bunch of people here. We got Rockstar. Shout out to Rockstar for making this happen and coming through and working with us and giving us a leeway. Oh, look at that. Who's this guy right here? Ooh, there's What's the homie up? Lex. Lex came for the tamales. Which one are you having, Lex? Um, I'm having the ones in between Dev and uh, Pochos. Oh, okay. That's uh, Beva. No, that's uh, La Masita Fina. Yeah, excellent. Awesome. It was great trying the pork now, but delicious. Awesome. Cool stuff. All right, we're That's gonna go meet them fire. right now. La Masita <laughs> Fina is what they used to call me in high school, Memo. You <laughs> said <laughs> La Masita Fina is what they call me. Oh, let's go over here with uh, Shane Stamales. So Shane Stamales over here, we recently wrote about him. He makes a vegan tamal, and I got to try it the other day. And it's got uh, the frijol and queso, it's vegan, mm. and it was absolutely delicious. I never thought I'd have a vegan tamal, let alone the frijol and queso that I would enjoy, but this thing is fire. Let's, uh, let's see. Oh, it looks like he's got the health inspector right now doing his oh. round. Let's go somewhere else, we'll come back to him. We don't want to destroy Let's move away, let's move away. We don't want to get people caught up. <laughs> <laughs> So we here, go. Hi. Hey, so we're here with Abel. Let me come over here. Hi. Hey, how you doing? Hi, how are you? Good, good. If you could just talk loud towards me so we can pick him okay. up if you yeah, think. Sure. But yeah, you got your... Take yeah, you can take him okay. off if you want. Okay. So, yeah, you got your cart and it was decorated by Depper, which yeah. you already knew, right? I didn't re actually met him, but I knew who he was, obviously, of the um, in the industry, of the art industry, and I just really um, thought it was an amazing opportunity for um, myself to be able to meet him in person. Not only that, um, to ha own one of the parts. Yeah. With the firm, the artist. Yeah, that's awesome. I mean, it was kind of like a, you were I was talking to her before, and she was like, I was blown away that I got paired up with Defer. And Defer's actually done some of our LA Taco Art we spoke way back. Oh, really? Yeah, so it was nice. really exciting to see you guys team up. Um, I just got a, an apron suit. Oh, shit, look at that. Look at that. Oh, that's tight. Yes, looking fly. Oh, my, my food I would not be wearing that apron. I'd just be. They told me to wear it. <laughs> <laughs> but I was afraid Oh, well, you should have Defer, like, autograph it. He's here right. right now, isn't he? Yeah, he's in here. Oh, awesome. I'm going to go right now. But tell him about your tamales. Well, yeah, you should have put him over to the with us right now. Yeah, I know. They're all random here, right? But tell me about your tamales. What kind of tamales you got? So, I have today um, birria, mole, chicken, and pork. Mm. So, I created pretty much uh, in Los Angeles right now the birria tamales. 
I usually have them with the consomme. Uh, you could dip them or drench them. And then I do the green salsa and the red salsa. Nice. You're telling me the birria is estilo Michoacán. Estilo Michoacán. And the chivo. Oh. You know, the OG style. Yes. Can I try one? Yes, you can. All right, let's get one. Listen. Laura, I just want you to know, Laura, that I'm eating these for you <laughs> on your behalf. So I'm when I to, eat, I eat to both of us, okay? I'm trying to be dripped and drenched like that tamal, okay? Send some over to mama. <laughs> I'm trying to be like that tamal. <laughs> she says that she wants to be drenched like that tamal right now. <laughs> she's hating because, you know, I get to be out here and she's stuck behind the desk. <laughs> Get that right. Enseñame la, la mordida. Yeah. 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 The masa is from scratch, everything. Uh, Gluten-free, no lard at it. Gluten-free, no lard at it. De birria. No, no, así se come. Come on. <laughs> there you go. Yum. Mm. All right, Memo. Gracias, Memo. Thank you for everything. Thank you. It's an honor for you guys uh, to give us this opportunity. LA Taco, thank you very much. Thank you, Memo. We're really happy that you guys got the benefit from this. Laura, I'm going to send it back to you at the studio. I'm going to keep eating tamales. And if you guys are in the area, come down. Because there's going to be plenty of tamales and rock stars, too. So, yes. see y'all later. Thanks, Memo. Thank you. Later, guys. Gracias. I don't know about y'all, but I wish I had three tamales in my mouth. I wish I was three tamales deep like Memo right now. But make sure if you are in the area... It's Angel City Market in Lenox that's putting together this great event with free tamales and free rock stars. Get that masa, get that energy. We're out here for that. This was such a great episode, y'all. Thank you for joining us. Make sure to tune in next week. Is our Valentine episode, okay? We love Valentines. We love love. Even though it's corporate, my mom was my first Valentine. She used to take me out to lunch when I was a kid. So make sure you love on yourself like I mentioned at the beginning. Subscribe to youtube.com slash LA Taco. Become a member at LATaco.com slash join and just become a part of the party because if you're not, you're missing out. We're excited to see you next week, y'all. Take care.